Fantastic. Welcome. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to episode six of Tales of a Thiel, where we're having entirely too much fun, and these guys are causing way more problems than I expected them to. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, it's a beautiful day. We're going to have a lot of fun. We have a lot of exciting things going on. Uh, does anyone have anything they'd like to say before we get started? All of our viewers and listeners are amazing. All right. Yep. Then let's start and with... We'll honestly, start... these, like, the fact we're already on episode six, it's gone a lot quicker than I thought it would. <laughs> right? <laughs> Fucking fast as hell. It feels like we're only on episode three, doesn't it? We we started over a month ago? Yeah. Wait, a month ago? What? Over okay. a month ago. Yeah, it's been that yeah, long. Yeah, we started mid-October. It's been a month and a half. I'm sorry you're Welcome sick. Welcome to your month and a half, Mark. No, sorry Dragon, you're sick, it's not been two weeks. Right. I was about to fucking ask. <laughs> so, in our bottom left, we've got Silas. Hello, hello. I'm Zephyr. I play Silas. He's an orc. He's a barbarian. He's terrifying, and he's terrified. Right next to him, we've got Kazim. Hey, I'm Josh. I play Kazim. He's an Aarakocra uh, cleric and rogue combo. It's going pretty terribly. And right next to him, we've got Mixtrix. Hi guys, I'm Dyer. I play Mixtrix. I am a cat bard, and I am very, very concerned with the fact that Kazim didn't like his song. He will. He'll love it. He'll love it. And right next to her, last but not least, is Nico. Hey, I'm a dragon. I play Nico. Nico's a lover, not a fighter. Please don't quote me on that. It is not going. How many people have you murdered? <laughs> Still the highest KD. I will not sign. I will, I will not sign down on that one ever. I didn't actually <laughs> think Silas has got a kill. No, he's got one. He's got. He's got one. one. He's got one. He's got one. Cool, well. Cool, cool. Uh, First of all, I want to thank you guys for coming to play and playing this game with me and having loads of fun with me. And thank you guys for coming to watch us. A uh, very special surprise for all of you viewers. Uh, we have officially got our own theme song, and I'd like to start that now as we get into our beautiful, amazing story from Tales of a Thiel. What is a ray of light without the shadow it creates? What is the darkness without desire for flame? What is a warrior without a worthy foe? What would you like to do? It's time to roll. When the lines between good and evil are blurred, no one knows if there is due no pain or came first. An ancient struggle throughout all time To push against the other keeps both upright Is the coming chaos worth the peace? Is it all just a puzzle to complete? A one-sided coin can't exist, is it real? And thus goes the tales of a seal Thus goes the tales of a seal. All right. That was our amazing thing song over uh, by the ever wonderful. Oh, that's too loud. Emily McNally Five over on Fiverr. She, I commissioned her to make us a theme song, and she went fucking above and beyond to make that for us. It's called Tales of a Thiel. It's going to be playing the beginning. Now all I got to make is like a credit as like a credit screen for, for it because that's going to be amazing. But I love it. Emily, if you're listening to this or watching this, thank you so much for that. That you did fucking fantastic. I can't get over it. Anyway, before we get started, we have to start every episode in the same way in which we do. And that's with our shot. Is everyone ready? Oh, they really got that, that deals. All right. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Cheers to you guys hey. for showing the love and coming in. Here's yeah, the Molly. campaign. Please. Warm, it's a little sour. Mm. It's a little easier every time. <laughs> It'll get better. <laughs> you know you're becoming an that alcoholic. That's not nearly as smooth as the nightcap, but you know Daya, what? It's fine. I, Daya, I'm a Twitch streamer. I've always been an alcoholic. Okay. We all are. <laughs> That's okay. Part of my family runs a bar, so. All right. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, where we last left off is our team has finally made it to Peak Barrow. 
and Kazim decided that he was going to go and form the Sunbeam of what has been going on in River's Run. But unfortunately, he seems to have just been brushed off and cast aside and taken off of the case in which he was supposed to do for, as he put it, immature. To which he blurted out probably the best statement of this whole campaign so far is, but I'm six. After kind of throwing a bit of a fit going down to the blacksmith, getting some interesting weapons while Silas and uh, Nico wandered about the town, getting gifts, finding prayers and interesting things along, Mystrix has decided to introduce music and entertainment to the Sky District of Peak Barrow, entertaining an entire crowd, uh, to which she invented some interesting songs along the way about our good friend Silas and our good friend Kazim. Hopefully there may be some renditions going about sometime, because who knows, I might get I might get bored and find someone else to make those for us. And where we were last set, Kazim had broken off onto his own after some jewelry and uh, selling some jewels and stuff into his room, and he was praying amongst himself to what he thought was Paylor and was left with a mysterious voice. In the meantime, our other compatriots, Nico, uh, Silas, and Mystrix decided to try their luck at telling the lights what has been going on in Rivers, Rivers Run. A little bit more luck than Kazim seemed to have, but uh, Mystrix and Nico get kicked out of the room while Silas, with a very interesting play, decides to show that he is also one of one from the gods. Getting, an getting to have an interesting conversation with uh, Terran, while the other two are out there, and the last thing that Nico and Mystrix saw was a familiar Aarakocra walking into the light. Where we are going to start is Kazim. While you're sitting there, floating in the dark, give me one second, and looking in front of you, this odd woman you've never seen before seems to have taken you into an extra century place where there is nothing except her standing there draped in her long beautiful black dress floor length with a slip on the side and covered in this weird shadowy mist as she just expressed to you that she wants to help you wander from your path a bit more so kazim what would you like to do i'm gonna look up at her face and just ask, who are you? As you look up at where her face should be, all you see is a silvery plate. A mask, if you will, but there are no features. There's no eye holes, there's no slits, there's nothing whatsoever. It's just perfectly smooth and reflective silver. So as you're looking up, you're seeing yourself and you hear her feminine voice again, feeling like it's coming from all around you and goes, I am what's left when there is no light. Okay. Are you... Are you like a goddess or something? Oh, some may call me that. Others may call me an idea. But you may call me... The Mist Queen. The Mist Queen. Very... It's an edgy name. Okay, ma'am. It's it's edgy. Uh, I'm just going to call you Misty if that's cool. Uh, I don't really do first names. Who? I like your spunk. See, this is exactly why we should tread a bit further from Paylor's light. Why would I? What reason would I have to leave Paylor's light? Look around as we sit here in the dark. Where is he? There is only me. Paylor has been guiding me my entire life, a very long six years that it's been. Uh, uh, just because he's not here right now with me, does not mean he won't be. She kind of cocks her head a little bit and you hear, is this you refusing? Uh, 
not necessarily. I, you're not providing me. You're, you're not telling me what you're providing me here. I, I've got it good with Paylor, ma'am. It's like, sure, the pay is not great, but they've raised me. They've treated me right. And they're not, this is a bad example. They're not treating me right now. It's my family. Paylor is my life. I can't just leave him for the first, frankly, woman who walks into my prayers. She kind of crouches down as as you're talking to her you're really starting to realize exactly how large this woman is she is at least twice your size as she kind of crouches down onto your level and kind of caresses your cheek a little bit and goes oh sweet child when you leave the light you'll see me again and she just kind of steps back and vanishes as the light begins coming back to your room So I'm back in my room. You are back in your room after that. Any other gods want to chime in? <laughs> anybody Anybody else got any plans? As Kazim beckons, echoes this in his room as he's kind of looking around, seeing if there's anything else. Silas! The Archmage has just, or Terran has just closed the door and locked it after you've raged and brought out your glaive. And, to, and asked you the question, what do you know of Thera's Dune? I fear a lot less than I should. Has Groomish shared any information about this with you? Does he know? From my interpretation, Groomish does not, and that is why I am here. Please... He Creatures slayed my clan, and Groomish has given me the ability to take revenge for all of Orc kind. He kind of stops and he looks at you and goes, For all that Paylor is, Sarah's Dune is not. He is his exact opposite. His enemy, his nemesis, yet also the same. And let me... I'm going to try and make this as perfectly clear to you as I possibly can, child of Groomish. Do not follow this path. You will not like where it ends. That choice is not mine to make. I have seen what they do. I have seen who they are. And whilst I understand your fears, is it not the duty of those who serve the gods to protect the gods as well? You may not like what I say, but I say not in offense, but in truth, Pelor, Grumsh, Bahamut, all the gods are in danger. He kind of looks around for a second and you see him quickly grab a piece of paper that's on the table and scribbles something down, folds it up and goes to shake your hand and goes, do not go down this path. And he opens the door and he starts leaving you in. You look in your hand, and you see that he has palmed you what looks like a note. I'll pocket the note for now. And as, as I walk away, I'll simply say, I hope if the time comes where we need each other, we will both find the aid we need. May the six protect you, and may Paylor's light guide your path. You as well, Traveler. And he opens the door. Before he opens that door, Nico, <laughs> Mistrix, you've just <clears throat> seen this Aarakrakra sitting in the main hallway. How do you respond? <laughs> I mean, I have no authority here, but best plan, first plan, yell halt. Oh, no, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm gonna like go toward him. Okay. Sure. Brave sure. cat. Brave cat. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. So we go. Nico, <laughs> behind you, you hear halt from as much authority as she can muster in her small cat body. As you begin, oh, no. as you begin, you walk towards this Aarakocra, and you see him kind of look around for a second, 
And then he kind of looks over at you guys and sees that you're walking up to him. And you see him kind of look behind him and kind of look at you and kind of do the whole... Me? Of course, you. You're the only one that walked in. And you kind of walk up to him. And, and getting a better look at him, you're able to see that he's got a very white kind of face with a nice orange kind of beak with a black stripe kind of starting right here and kind of going wider as it goes towards his eyes as the his back feathers kind of go into this beautiful almost golden color all the way down and you look as you trail down it goes into a more sandy kind of color as it goes further down and he kind of get, looks at you and goes um yes what is your name i'm going to ask him that looking at his eyes because i want to see Okay, you what look, and he's got brilliantly blue eyes. Okay. And he just goes, uh... And he kind of... You could see him kind of thinking for a second and goes... Saren? May I shake your hand? <laughs> oh, God, oh, God, oh, no, no. You see him kind of confused and hold out his feathered arm. I'm gonna, like palm my knife and like gently stab him as I fucking ah, fucking claws you roll, your claws roll well, yeah, yeah yeah claws work too claws work too are you, are you, claws are you going daggers. claws yeah right. I, I won't make you do sleight of hand yeah. then well I can do sleight of hand because I am a cat I won't make you though because you're using okay. your claws so you kind of okay. go and I'm assuming I you're I forgot that I have cat claws I'm you're, sorry you're gonna try and cut his hand open just a little bit, not enough to like fucking. So Look, I don't want a repeat of the last time. I don't want to accidentally <laughs> murder cut, someone. Cut a main vein in his arm. No, so <laughs> you go and reach out and you go to shake his hand, and I, you you get a little a uh, little dig in into the palm of his hand. You see him recoil and go, oh, fuck. Oh, oh and you my look, bad. And you see it kind of bleeding normally. Oh my bad. Uh, I haven't cut my claws in a while. You you kind of look kind of looks at you and goes, what are you? doing i was just shaking your hand i'm sorry i forgot to trim my claws with your passive insight you hear the door behind you open and you see him kind of look behind you and his eyes kind of grow wide as he quickly pulls his hand to himself and goes excuse me and starts walking over to Terran. uh oh, silas you guys are walking out and you I see will point out, i will point out silas is still very much shirtless Okay, so <laughs> so you see you see the familiar Arakakra walking towards Terran and seems very he has a very concerned look of this ripped uh, orc walking walking behind Terran with his weapon out, mind you, uh, and you hear this guy that he just told you his name was Saren walk up and go, uh, Terran, if we may speak in private, please, and you see Terran kind of go. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, abs absolutely. Please come this way. And you see him kind of quickly trying to get him into the room. Mm. I'm gonna show Nico that there is, like, blood on my claw. It's like, could it be the horse? Is the horse <laughs> the issue? <laughs> I don't know. I'm having a fucking heart attack here. I thought we could have fucking... You could have fucking murdered the person again. I'm... Oh, I'm torn. I'm torn. Uh, hold oh on, Silas. God. I'm gonna oh walk no. to Terran real quick. Be like, Terran, wait. Can I? Can I ponder you for half a second? Uh, you see, Terran kind of quickly turn around and push this guy into the room and close the door and looks behind you and goes, "Yes." He looks exactly like the creature that we were trying to beat here. And you see him kind of look, kind of both ways. I'm gonna like hold up my hand and be like. He kind of so far, he's okay. he kind of walks closer to you, gets right up to your ear and whispers, "Did he read Kazim's mind?" Probably. And you kind of see him sit back and think for a second and go, "Very well, thank you for letting me know. I assure you that this is not the same creature." Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I tested, so I I, I can vouch for that, but. Tell him I do apologize. I will make sure that he receives your note. Um, please, I must ask you guys to clear the light. I'm going to go check his horse. <laughs> <laughs> Cat's fucking <laughs> uh, She literally is just like, okay. <laughs> Nico just like facepalm and like he would just start walking after the cat. 
Very well. So you guys here are gonna leave the light. I will yeah, yeah. follow them, and once we're outside the light, then I will read the note. As we're walking to the horses? Yeah, I'm like reading as I walk, but I'm, like, I'm not reading it in the light. Okay. Just for my so own security. I, I have sent you Thank the you. notes. Uh, as he kind of walks back into the room, quickly closes it, and you guys don't hear anything as you guys are beginning to walk out. Kazim, what you doing? You've yelled out, asking if there are any other gods present with, to no avail and no answer. I'm going to go check the jails, or I'm going to go check the uh, the library here in Peak Barrow, uh, hoping that my friends have not already gotten themselves arrested. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> you begin walking down. And you see the scribe that had knocked, your, knocked on your door not, um, not a moment ago asking for you, uh, kind of waiting there as he sees you walk out and immediately walking down and he kind of immediately starts leaving, assuming that you're going to start heading towards the light so he can go let Terran know that he's informed you. And it seems like it's a, it's fairly, it's getting a bit later. Um, it's getting, it's not terribly busy there. It's very kind of quiet there's maybe like three or four ish people in the bar right now as you begin walking out you see the sun kind of dipping over the dwarven uh mountain in front of you you see that the couple lights begin to flicker on in front of these businesses around you and you actually manage to see your friends walking out of the light currently as they walk up to a horse that was kind of nearby as there are five of them in front of the light and mystrix which one you stabbing gonna stab a horse how else are you gonna check you've stabbed everyone else i'm sorry but we clearly saw this man riding a horse which one looks similar to the one you, from that you didn't see it kazim saw it i was gonna say we didn't see yeah, you have it. no idea anyway. which one it is well which horse looks like it's been the most exhausted they're all traveling horses uh, actually you know what make a nature check we'll see what you okay. can do all right all right <laughs> Doubting my abilities being a cat and such. <sighs> I didn't realize my nature was that good. 18. Okay, so you're able to tell. You're looking amongst them, and you see that two or three of them seem to have been there for quite a moment. And there's one in particular that you look down, and you see that there are, is some kind of wet mud as if it just got done with kind of a long ride, perhaps through the forest. If I put my hand on this horse, does it feel really warm compared to I mean, the others? It's, it's alive. It's not an engine. No. So. Okay. As a, <laughs> as a horse person, if a horse has been ridden hard and like been through a lot of work, it cools down a lot faster than horses that have been standing for a while. So I would it, be able to tell as a cat the heat difference. I'm not. I will say sure that this I one. I can tell as a person the heat difference. I'm sorry. I, I sure this one feels like it was written the most recently I guess okay well then I'm gonna like nonchalantly <laughs> look in the bags and see what's going on in the bags oh no. <laughs> uh, Captain and Nico will stand to, and try to cover her with yeah. his Silas you can do anything as you see the, her rummaging through a horse that you're do quite I sure isn't yours do I oh see God. Kazim uh, yeah, I would say you see Kazim just walk out of the feathered bed real quick. I'm going to beckon him over and then put my shirt back on. Okay. But I beckon him over first. Why was your shirt off? <laughs> Evidence. Oh, God. Why are right. you shirtless? Because I can be. Uh, Did you go to the an investigation with your here. shirt off? Oh, what? Kazim, how's it going? No, no, it was as more you, you see... than your attempt. <laughs> Mr. <Mystery. Wow. laughs> <laughs> he likes larger taller men, I suppose. Come You're on. I'm not going to imply was. that my Pope. <laughs> very intelligent, and I was very good at explaining the situation, unlike a certain feathered friend. We will discuss this. Oh, right. but we'll, we will discuss Are this you in a private setting. just pilfering a saddlebag in broad not daylight? I am not taking anything. <laughs> I am Speaking just looking. Which, roll for investigation. <laughs> All right. Kazim, you're the one who was on a critical, subtle mission. 
And you're uh, currently out in the street yelling. Hey, Technically, none of us are on a subtle mission anymore, okay? How's the 24 hit you? Well, so you kind of look around and you see what looks like rations, a tent, bedroll, some rope. May mainly just kind of traveling things. You don't really see too much out of order. You would assume that if there was anything special, he probably wouldn't leave it on his horse. Yes, but I would I would notice if he was wearing a bag or anything whenever we first saw him and you didn't say he was not, wearing a bag. Not necessarily. He could have it underneath his robes. You're not too sure. You have no idea what a sleight of hand <laughs> might be. I don't want to know what's under his robes. So yeah. Jeez. There Calm are some things there. that if it was important, he'd probably try and hide it. But no, you don't really okay. see anything well, then of I'm gonna interest. Go to the, I'm going to go to the head of the horse and I'm going to pet the horse and just calm it. Just like, okay. You, you, you're not I've stabbing done, it? I've, I can, I'm going to look at its eyes, but okay. other than that... No, the, the eyes look perfectly fine, but yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Pilfering done. Well, none. Pilfering, you, pilfering You see done. you're kind of rummaging through the, this horse's... <laughs> Sag, you see it kind of you almost hear the disappointment in her size. God mm. damn it, there's nothing in here. As she just kind of goes to the front of the horse and just starts petting it in defeat. Mm. Were you actually expecting to find anything in there? I mean, it's better to look and not find anything than not look and everything be here. I suppose I can. Oh, uh, hey, because yeah, guess what? Logic. <laughs> I forgot something to tell you just a second ago. Guess what? What's that, Mistrix? You know that rock? Yeah. Oh, boy. Somebody took the real jewel, and I'm not very proud of that. What? I Deadpan looks him straight in the eyes and says, Someone took the glowing rock. <laughs> when? I don't fucking know. It was on my person the entire night, but when he took it, it was nothing. But a very pricely made copy. She's gonna go back to petting the horse. <laughs> back to petting the horse. So, people refuse to believe us. We've got no proof to show. Whatever oh, no, is, like, us. No, 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 I... Whoever well, was fucking going here has already started fucking started spreading rumors about us, and we Should are just we really relax. be discussing this all in public, where sure. everyone I... could hear us? That is an excellent point, Silas. I got us some rooms over at the inn. Let's go talk about it there. Uh, in one of those rooms, preferably. I think that would be a very good idea. I think four people <sighs> in one room is a bit of an insinuation, but okay. Just say it's a book club. <laughs> book? I'm sorry, Silas. It does not look like you read books, good sir. We're gonna go play cards. I can't read. How about that? Oh, like chess. it matters. How about, we have, how about we play chess? Oh Let's God. go play chess. We're not playing cards or chess or discussing books. We are talking about incredibly important information. Yes, and you're gonna say that out in public where you just pointed out we shouldn't be talking about these things. Oh my fucking god. Let's go to the fucking. So how did anyone trust us with anything? Silas is just gonna start walking. Fuck this shit. Yeah. I, I, oh my god. I'm gonna walk in the direction Kazim came from, and but slow enough for him to be able to catch up. And Still tingly. buttoning your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you assume Silas can work, but it, it is like a simple student. <laughs> With these huge the fingers. Like, oh it is God. it is a it is a single tunic that like is got like holes and tears in it. Like these are the clothes he was attacked in a week Silas, ago. Silas, do I need to get you better clothes? We gotta go shopping, man. Like I have a disguise <sighs> kit. Do you think that'll help? I'm wearing this by choice, Miss Rex, but I appreciate it. Can I, I clean them. Can I get you a fancy jacket? I will yeah. be fine. Can I we keep... sew up the holes at least? Like, I will be fine. I clean them. I make sure that they are well kept. Mm hmm. He says wearing that look shirt. however he anyway. wants. Well, yeah. <laughs> let's go talk. Yes, let's go. I love how we're just casually throwing shade at each other. <laughs> as any good adventuring party would. So as we venture back through the streets, the sun begins to set just a 
bit more, the white stone that the street seems to be made out of begins to kind of go a, a beautiful kind of pinkish orange hue as the kind of matching the sky as well. It's not glowing, right? <laughs> no, none of it's glowing. Okay. <laughs> I'm very suspicious of glowing things now. Fuck off. You see a small child running around with a glowing <laughs> rock now. <laughs> I will pimp snap no, child to the ground. No, we are fucking ambushing that bitch, okay? No. <laughs> child goes in the bomb bag. <laughs> Yay! Bomb bag! We find ourselves back at the entrance of the inn to which you guys are able to go upstairs, go into the room. What are we doing? Um. I, I think we go to a room, honestly. I will be there in just a moment. I want to talk to the barkeep. Okay. Just had breakfast, right? Like we just it's, had it. You just had well, we you just had lunch. A yeah. little while ago, lunch, you had lunch. Okay. Yeah. So okay. you walk up to the barkeep as he's wiping some stuff down and having a conversation. And he I goes, forgot his. I forgot his name. Hold on. Ah, you didn't tell. You didn't ask for it. Uh, welcome. Okay. I think you had it wrote written down. Yeah, that's why I'm like, where are my notes? Why is everything complicated today? I have to look it up. I, I think it's like, I know it's something fucking stupid, simple. Charles Barkley. No. Laren, Laren, Larian, or some shit like that. What the fuck? I don't want to, have to go find it again. Do you have it? Uh, hold on. Let me put this back down to the sizes that I'm used to. Well, while you're looking up that name to talk to him, you guys go up to the room, and as you are, you guys going up to the room? Or are you waiting for her? Uh, I'm going up to the room. All right. So you guys walk up to the room, and as you kind of push it open, it's definitely much better to the accommodations in which Nico and uh, Silas are accustomed to. It's got a, it's got two beds in it. A beautifully plush kind of down uh, uh, carp, uh, comforters on it. Nice comfy pillows and this large kind of decorative rug that seems very red with the symbol of Paylor in the middle of it. You've got a beautiful little window with a little <laughs> sill seal that are, is a uh, open up to be able to overlook the rest of Peak Barrow with you get yourself a nice little wardrobe. There's two as in case two people wanted to stay in this room. And you guys are in there. What are you guys doing? You gonna wait for Miss Tricks to come up before you start talking? I, th I think it's I mean, best. Yeah, talk everyone should be here for the talk smack about the cat. Do okay. it. No, okay. Miss Tricks, did you find the name? <laughs> yes, I did. What is it? Uh, I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Ternal? Oh, Ternal. That's yes. right. T E R N A L. That's right. Yes. Okay. Oh, that's what that name was that I have uh, yeah, <laughs> scribbled down on a page with no explanation. So you, you <laughs> walk up to him you. as he's having the conversation. He goes, Ah, welcome back, Miss Mit Trixie. Can I help you? Hi, Ternal. Um, I was hoping to talk to you about something. Um, of course, yes. What, what, can, what, what do you need? Can we step over to the corner? It's a little bit of a private matter. Absolutely. Come here, my prize, my prize show winner. And he kind of brings you over to the end of the bar and goes, what can I help you with? So the other night mm -hmm. when I came in, mm -hmm. um, when I was doing my shows, I kind of adjusted things in my bag. Everything looked fine, but it appears someone has taken something of great, great meaning to me. Oh, dear. And I was hoping if you hear any kind of rumors about it, if you would let me know. Absolutely. And he kind of quickly grabs a little quill and a uh, piece of paper and goes, what, can you can you describe it for me? It was a beautiful stone, uh, mm -hmm. rather spherical and kind of large. Okay. Had of a, had a, what would you say, pinkish yeah, color? Yeah, pinkish. Yeah, had a pinkish color to it. Oh, what was it a large, a sphere kind of rosemary quartz? Is that kind of what we're looking for? Roundabout, yeah. Okay, perfect. There's plenty of those around here, so... So well, is, this one this one is very specific and okay. has so a lot it, of meaning. If, if I saw it or heard about it, I'd probably be able to tell. Yes. Okay, okay, just want to make sure. Yeah. If they're talking about it, that's probably the one that I'm looking for. I named it Jewel. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I will I will make sure I keep an ear out for you, dear. Thank you. We'll be upstairs if you hear anything. Pretty please. Great. Just, and and if you guys get a little bored, come on down for some drinks. I could use we could use a little bit more music around here. I will certainly do that before I go to bed. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. He kind of goes back to his work. As and I'm going to he... sprint my little cat self upstairs. Like bounce on top of the banister <laughs> all cat-like and like scurry up the banister. You, you kind of <laughs> hear this. Ah, 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 kind of, like he's like, oh, what are you? Never mind. I don't leave claw marks. I'm wearing gloves. We're okay. 
as you guys are talking amongst yourselves, just kind of ripping on Mistrix, the cat person downstairs. She instantly opens the door. Okay, I did my deed. Close this door. Lock door. We'll continue Kazim. this conversation later. So let's talk about <laughs> the important stuff, huh? Uh-huh. Kazim, um, what, what can you tell me about Thera's Dune? That's a good question. Thera's Dune, huh? I will be completely transparent with you if you will be completely transparent with me. I would love to be completely transparent with you, Silas. What I know about Thera's Dune is... A lot? Karma, help me out here. Do I know anything about Thera's Dune? <laughs> you could roll for... You could roll for religion. With I just scrolled through all my notes. <laughs> yeah, th this is... I, I, we'll, we'll, we're going to find out how much you might know. I'd say that's a pretty decent amount. Religion, you said? Yes. That's a 19. Okay, so you don't know too much. He's kind of like the boogeyman of like Paylor's like you've heard stories that there was this great evil that Paylor once fought known as Thera's Dune uh and that he was successful in locking him away and that essentially all you have heard about Thera's Dune is like he's the source of all evil and Paylor is the source of all good essentially that he's the opposite of Paylor that's what as pretty much as far as you know there's not too many like Weirdly enough, there's not a lot of accessible information about Thera's Dune, which, you know, you you assume that it's because he's maybe not real. He's kind of the same as, like, the doppelgangers, kind of a children's story that you haven't heard. You've heard before, but you never really put much merit into it. Would I know that he's the one that's locked behind with the anchors? Um, I would say with the research you did earlier... Um, you might have made that connection, but not necessarily sure for like a hundred percent sure. Not, not like proof of it, but I it, yeah. I could put pieces together. It popped that idea popped into your head. It sure did. Okay, so Silas, get this. There's Dune. It's like the boogeyman, right? And uh, I'm under the impression that the anchors are trapping him in the astral sea. That's pretty much it. Well, I met a gentleman called Terran. I assume you know. Oh, him. fuck Terran. Yeah, what about him? Well, he is very afraid that Thera's Dune is becoming a much greater threat. And he has warned me not to go down this path as it will lead to a terrible end. Cool. Sorry, I just needed cool. to applaud Karma for getting his shot glass to work. He did it right! <laughs> I have a tiny champagne glass. Yeah, Ter Terran would be worried about that stuff. He's super big on the religion uh, kind of aspect. I, I wouldn't put much merit behind the things he says, but... Well, he... Honestly, it sounds like what we're doing is helping him anyway. Yes, well, he believes what we're saying is true and I believe I made him an ally he told you that he believes us yes he is actively concerned yes and I had a conversation with him and I think he and I am on this are on the same level I've had a lot of conversations with Taryn any chance he said it in a semi sarcastic tone no <laughs> he gave me a look of would I call it a look of fear? 100%. You would see that there was immense concern amongst his uh, about his face. He looked about as serious as Nathan did when he saw his son was injured. Damn. And I'm saying this deadpan. See, so you guys made it into the church. Yes. Talked to the Sunbeam and Terran and walked out of there with no issues. We didn't get to the Sunbeam, but I'm hoping that with the work I'm going to be doing. Oh, we also saw the, the bird. You know, that horse that I was pilfering, quote unquote. 
You saw the doppelganger? It, well, the person who the doppelganger stole his persona from, yeah. It bled. The, the, the person was a person. I don't remember their name, but I would tell him their name. Okay, but you interacted with the supposed doppelganger. I cut him? Okay. Breathe, please. Express. Working on it. <laughs> uh, okay. We all have previously that, interacted with this thing. That so. could have gone very, very badly. You remember mm -hmm. what happened last time we interacted I know. with him? I know. But it was the best course of action in the hot second that I had. And I so understand far, that he led like normal. I understand so, that he wasn't a doppelganger, as far as we could tell, with our very meticulous look. Cut your hand open check, but look. that. Do I need to do it again? Do I need to cut myself here? Is that what this is? You know what? <laughs> Look, guys. I would appreciate that. I don't believe okay. anybody could walk out of there with Terran's good blessing. Okay. Are you serious? You make me use a claw, or do you want me to use the dagger? And if I gotta do it, you gotta do it. Of course. Oh Alice will simply God. hold out his hand. Teach One blade. Everybody, put their palms in the center. One blade. We'll do a circle. Hold on, different blades. We can't be crossed. We can't be using the same blade. That's a hot bed for disease. I'm sorry. At this point, we've all bled on each other and had other people's blood on us. We're already infected. What do you Just want? Cut my hand. Oh my god. <laughs> you right, guys I'll do it. are fucking I'll do idiots. It. Nico, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, well, hold Gee, on. Thank you. We kind of. It's kind of got all, all or nothing, us, right? All, all three supposed... of us were together the entire time. All three of us were together the entire time. If one of us isn't the doppelganger, none of us isn't the doppelganger. I have been within a hundred foot radius of Nico the moment we stepped into Peak Barra. Same. Nico was the one in the cave with us. We went to pray together. Then they went to a shop nearby. We both met up. All right, well, let's just do this. She's just going to do it. She's going to be like, there you go. Yeah. We'll... Am I... Mr. Explode Black. <laughs> Can I roll insight on Nico really quick? Sure. God. Sure. What are you trying to insight? Uh. If they're. If. Well, really, if either of the three of them are lying to me about what happened. Okay. That's a 14. I mean. It's hard to tell, but. You have, I don't see you have a reason to not believe them. And you see that, who who cut themselves, Mistrix? Yes. Yeah. It, and, it, it, and Silas will do it after her. Yeah, perfectly regular blood. I'll cut open my hand. And just the, no, I'm just kidding. It's, it's regular <laughs> blood. <laughs> I will Look, offer. I'm expecting this at some point. I will offer the blade to Nico, but I won't force it into his hand. You guys are idiots. He takes a blade and he cuts open his palm. Okay. Everything's fine. Oh. Everyone's bleeding normally. I'm going to get band-aids and I'm going to fix us while we talk. Nico will just suck on the palm instead. <laughs> <laughs> we can't be too careful here. There's a doppelganger who knows who we are, has some sort of vendetta against us. This guy actively looked like he didn't know us from the north side of a. I I mean, the South doppelganger, now. from what we've seen, can just kill us just like that. So if you truly wanted us dead, believe me, none of us would have walked out of there alive. That's I why hate I'm to break it to you. you. Did. Well, I'm sorry. I'm very impulsive right now, but I'm trying my best to keep this shit together. It's, it's, we, it's been rough. We've been here a day, right? It's we got here enough. this today? Yes. Yeah. This morning. Do we have any way of contacting the fucking people from the fucking flow and telling them, hey guys, we made it, by the way, just so you know, uh, shit is be whack already, yo. You know? You know <laughs> do, we, do we have anything? You know what's going to be crazy? Trying to get back to the flow now that we 
blew up that tunnel. That's what I was uh, saying before, but no one listened to me. In our defense. Oh, oh, actually, yeah. We actually fixed it. Well, the way back, you know, with the portal. Because apparently we have access to it, you know? Yeah. We have yeah. no reason to believe that portal will work. Also, well, we have no reason not to believe it least, wouldn't. At we least now may we not, know what to look for. We may not we have access portal. to that portal anymore. We also trapped whatever we're after with us. So, they could just ride out of town. They could take a long allow, time. allow me to recap. Mm -hmm. Terran has said, as far as I remember, that he will grant us access to the portal mm -hmm. because yes. he wants us to go back to Rivers Run and help their defense. Karma, remind me who he said he was sending? The Rays? Uh, the... Yes, he said he, he said that he will send out the Rays as soon as he can. He is sending the Rays to Rivers Run. He is allowing us access to the portal to get back to Rivers Run when we're done with our business here. He believes Mistrix. He trusts me. He sent a messenger to go collect you so we could... But you never showed up. Well, you showed up a little late. Not that uh, didn't show up. Let, let's be real. The, the messengers have never gone well. Especially when one of us is alone at a, at a tavern. Fair. It's... Hot, hot. <laughs> you almost died that so, night. Yeah, I, yeah, I fucking I almost died. Something. Hey, I helped. Anyway, can I bring up something? There were talks of how the fairy tales and the boogie creatures of the stories are coming um, to life, right? Because doppelgangers are supposed to be fairy tales. Well, the big bad that uh, we're thinking is bad is supposed to be a boogeyman of sorts. Let, let's be real for a second. I don't think it's fairy tales coming to life. I think they're fairy tales yeah. based on creatures that used to exist on this plane, but now don't, and now okay. are coming back. But you also have to think, this town also has an issue with its own fairy tale creature right now. What fairy tale creature? The lady. The nightmares. That's a different town. Uh, that's a different town. That sounds like. You know what I mean? I don't know. I, I'm cat. Well, I'm not very good at knowing where we are. But there to are be towns perfectly that are having honest, issues. Though, to be perfectly honest, I think it might be the same creature. Technically. I believe, at least. Even if it is a different creature, why are they all coming together if they're from different fairy tales? What, Who's what are you said saying? They're different fairy tales. Nico. I, I don't believe it's different fairy tales per se. Like the story Terror Sarah, like it's it's a story about a girl that was um sort of like an outcast like in a um in a village or a town, and uh, she could enter, you know, people's dreams, set them nightmares and, and such, like, people got scared of her, and, um, you know, kind of made her an even bigger outcast. They just didn't understand what she was doing, so, you know, she started using her magic on them, sending them nightmares and shit, and, like, when whenever, the, like, people would be angry with her and, like, suspect her, she would just, you know, change so to say you know like a doppelganger would so like you know so that she could maintain her persona and like make new friends and such and like when that didn't go well well but she but started... she had a true form though doppelganger is not really I, I, I don't know i've i've heard about this story from my child's book okay like this is this is nothing for sure it just when something can change anyway. shape my, my, point like here, that. my point here being, I don't think that the doppelgangers and the other fairy tales are just coincidence. I think something is making all of this come back up. There is, dude. So there has to be a central thing that we can do to get rid of all of this. Well, we know they're after mm -hmm. the anchors. Yes, but is each individual and fairy tale lost. after the anchors? I don't think it matters. Maybe Therosun's manipulating well, them. But I'm saying if it, if it does, if they are going after these anchors, they're kind of our source to find and locate the other anchors. You mean tail the doppelgangers? Hmm? 
but you, you, you see what I'm going at here, though. How, right? how do you how do you follow somebody who can read our mind? They'll know we're there. We need to. The point being, Kazim, if your theory is correct, and that breaking these anchors will release Therosdun, and if that is what Terran fears, if that is what happened in Rivers Run, we need to find the jewel quickly, because if anyone has it, be it nightmares or doppelgangers, if they have it and they want to break it, it could already be broken. But I'm pretty sure the doppelgangers already destroyed the anchor they were after. I think they want to destroy... I, I think... Well, my, my, my point being, I think they were they have some they're going after and the others have things they're going after. It doesn't have to be the doppelgangers that we follow. No, we, we follow the anchors because... If they all break, and there's they, comes back. And they can probably, if they're going after them, they can lead us to them. I don't have any way for certain to say they are going to them. But it's a or, good what kind you're of... What trying to say, whereas yeah. anchors, there's, there's the doppelgangers, basically. Or there's nightmares. Or nightmares. Yeah, or... there's a bad guy going after these good, pretty shiny things. Here's a problem with that plan. Mm -hmm. We almost got our this ass one? kicked last I time. I know, I know. We can't just go in there and expect to save the day. But at least I have a plan. It's... We, go back, we go back to Rivers Run and talk to the council then. The council's going to be more help to us than anybody here is. Wow. So we're going to live, leave the city that the doppelganger was heading towards. As if um, nothing happened. Where my jewel is missing. Where there is an active anchor in its town. Nobody said we're let's, leaving. Let's... We just said we're going to talk to the council. Let's be real for a second. None of us touched the crystal. We were all very careful as to not to. No. We don't know if the crystal we picked up even was real. Right? Do we have any reason the to point, believe otherwise? The point is, when I rolled the thing, when I handed it to him, he knew that that's what it was supposed to be. That it was a knockoff, but that's what it was supposed to be. It wasn't glowing like it used to. Things were wrong with it. It wasn't perfect like it was. Even so holding it in that cloth, you could tell that it had the weight of a perfect sphere. And it wasn't the same. Okay, so the crystal we picked up in the cave was is, is most likely yes, is most likely real. When and has someone the crystal, has taken it. When has the crystal ever been apart from you? Let's start from there. The only time it would have been apart from me is when I was in this tavern, which is why I had a talk with the barkeep that if he heard any rumors about my missing rock, to let me know. And I described it to him as something precious to me, not something... Yeah. So, the only place that it could have been stolen from you was Is when around you were here. drawing a crowd of completely random people whose faces we may never see again. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I don't like where you were going with this one. Thank you for making me seem like a complete and utter buffoon. I will no longer it's, do my trade. It's no... I'm not making you seem like a buffoon. I'm saying we're up a creek and we've lost our paddle about two miles back. No. Every... Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, okay? The fact that I drew in a crowd means that someone had to have seen something. We're just gonna go now downstairs and question a bunch of fucking strangers. Yo, to. guys, did you, did you we see? We don't have to. Rumors spread. How did that go last time when we tried to spread rumors in fucking Rivers One? It went pretty fucking well. I should nearly kill them. almost fucking lost it. it. She almost killed you guys. She didn't almost get everything the royal that us. involves. The lovely path of charm and avant-garde I am good at. I... I'm not seeing a line here. I gotta be honest. 
why would somebody steal something and then spread rumors about stealing it? Not Especially if it's a doppelganger that stole it. You're using your very elegant bird-like brain. Or did you're, you just call me a bird thinking... brain? Oh my <laughs> fucking god. Okay. Anyway, what I'm saying... No, no, no. Is, We're not going to brush someone, past this. Roll for someone racism. Stole, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. I'm, no, I've already rolled nat 20. You fuck off. <laughs> You're deeply I'm offended. You can tell it's incredibly what does that racist. Mean? What does the Let's... not funny racism role mean? <laughs> we got I mean, it. Fuck off, bird. Anyway. <laughs> oh. Guys, Stop guys, calling please. Me bird. No. Come on, guys. Nico, okay. should I talk to you in private and let these This is happening. This is happening again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm Let's... going to leave. Oh, my God. If this is our best chance no of finding the crystal, Just leave we it. have... No one's fucking leaving, guys. Oh my god. I would like to talk to Nico in private. Good for you. So, you two do whatever the hell you want. I'm gonna go downstairs and I'm gonna play music. All right. Don't, don't kill each so, other, Kazim. Mid conversation, there, Mistrix just all of a sudden storms out and starts clobbering down the stairs, kind of muttering to herself, stupid motherfucking bird brain. Bitch, motherfucker. <laughs> yes. Stupid like bird. Like bird brain. Time. This is the second time the bird has <laughs> fucked something up that I'm trying to use intelligence with. I mean, it, no. goes, it goes deeper into perhaps she's racist for a reason. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but I am a bird and, well, he is a bird and I am a cat. Oh Fair my point. god. Anyway, Kazim, you're kind of just sitting there like, uh, um, uh, and then Silas tells you that he needs to go speak with Nico alone and kind of leaves you there as they walk off into their own little side. Are you guys... I, I, I'll make Before sure Nico leaves. At, uh, yeah, I want to quickly look back at Kazim. I will be back. We're not leaving the building. I'm going to just whisper to Kazim, you better fucking fix this. I swear to God. We didn't we break you. To be Whatever. Get out. I'm going to pray. Pray to your worthless god. Even if you're not <laughs> fuck you by the last time, I'm sure I'll get him this time. Even if you're not physically uh... split, somehow you guys have still managed to split the party. Yep. Anyway, as they kind of walk out, and they, I assume that you handed out the keys to the other rooms, Kazim. Yeah. Okay, I assume you guys are just going to go over to one of the other rooms yeah. and you open it up yeah. and kind of go inside, and what are you guys going to talk about? Yeah. Nico, you mentioned nightmares. What? Yeah, it's... It's just a stupid children's story, really, but like... I've been having nightmares. Really... You've been having nightmares? About the doppelganger. I didn't want to say it in front of everyone because I don't want to cause another rift. And another cool, argument. Cool, 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 cool. I need to know if I am a danger to this group. No, no, quite the opposite. Dude, look. The story, right? Like. Oh my god. It was about, like, this young girl. And she, you know, she had strange powers. She could just enter people's dreams, right? But, like, she couldn't control it. So she accidentally went into people's dreams, which is why they, you know, they ostracized it. Like, they just, they excluded her from everything. Like, you know, and when people get shunned out, like, they tend to lash out, right? So, like, she tried to train up her powers and, uh, you know, just try and start to, like, using them or, like, dis like disobedient, like, rude children, like, sending them night terrors. But like, it, you know, when you do shit like that, like it just gets worse. Like, so they went, got afraid of her and she started to like disguise herself, like to look like different people, which makes me think this is just like the fucking doppelganger that is fucking after us, all of us, all of this. Here is my theory, because this is another fable right? This isn't history, this is a story you tell to make sure your kids go to bed at night. I mean, I assume yes. What if 
the fairy tales about doppelgangers, about nightmare children. What if they're all the same thing being told in different ways by different people? I mean, that's what I was thinking. Like, Sarah went mad. Like, she she really got mad. And if anything that we've seen with this doppelganger so far screams mad, I mean, come on. I... <laughs> In our downtime, I'm going to do research to see how many different scary stories match up and line up. Just, if you have another nightmare or so, and if you feel in any way off, just tell someone, tell me. I mean, from the story, like, everyone, you know, who's been sent those dreams, they died of fright. So, I'm, you know, if, if you start feeling off, I mean, that was, come on. Her, I promise. This is why I've come mm -hmm. to tell you that those two are tearing each other apart, and I cannot handle it right now. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. What are we supposed to do? Karen asked me to meet him tonight. And you I, plan on going? Here's the issue. He specifically, and I'll show the note to Nico. He specifically told me to not bring Kazim. Not For what bring reason? Kazim. I don't know. If all three of us go and we leave Kazim on his own, that makes him vulnerable. If I go on my own, that makes me vulnerable. I don't know what to do. Uh, he didn't want you to go alone, did he? Or... He only said, don't bring Kazim. But I don't want to leave well, Kazim in danger. We can't leave... We can't leave Kazim with... With Mr. X, I mean... You see how that goes every single time? Would you like me to take Mr. X with me in the mine and you watch Kazim? I honestly feel like... For tonight, we need to keep those two apart. Because this is twice this has happened. In the last 24 hours. I mean, look, I don't have the best track record of, you know, keeping people safe per se, but I was sure I, I will stay with Kazim, but like... I mean, you've done great with Freya so far from what I've seen. Oh yeah, totally. Paul, Paul let it know. She's safe. Uh, uh, look, no, me. wait, no. I don't know. Okay. I do. We'll be okay. We need to worry about ourselves right now, and then we'll get back, and we'll give her this, and I'll pull out the crossbow. I, mm, mm. <sighs> I told you, I'm going to teach her how to shoot properly, because you're a terrible no. shot with a bow. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I am a terrible shot, but so I... I don't feel comfortable leaving you guys, per se, alone. If I tell Kazim <sighs> that Terrence asked me to meet him alone, that could put Kazim in danger. If I don't tell him, we're going to assume that you can't trust me. I, I'm at a crossroads. I don't know what to do. For the first time in my life, I genuinely don't know what to do. Look. What if... Mistrick, she, she wants to look for the jewel. And she knows how it looks like. Exactly how she's the one that was... Had the best look at it. In Kazim, he clearly knows this place around, he knows the people around here. We just, like, what if we have those two actually look and, like, maybe ask people about it? I mean, no one knows this better, this place better than Kazim does. If we just have properly. them... If we just have them walk together for, like, one night... 
And then you and I go to the mine? Yeah. Look, I don't even have to be there in person. Like I would feel safer with you there. You go convince Mistrix. I'll go convince Kazim. Can we switch? You know, like <laughs> I think you will be you Mistrix is more likely to listen to you than she is me or Kazim. Uh, God. I think that may be an asset we can use to our advantage in this current predicament. Are you telling... Silas, what, what, what are you telling me to do right here, right now? Am I supposed to... Convince Miss Rakes to go on a walk with Kazim tonight to find the jewel. Then tomorrow... Fine. We'll Fine. go... Whatever happens tonight with Terran... We'll judge on whether we go back to Rivers Run, whether we just try and message them or find a scrying pool or anything like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's way better than facing off with Doppelganger for sure. I mean, yeah, it's just convincing the two people that hate each other's gods to the fucking extreme to spend time together and work together. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Not hard at all. Cool, yeah. The four of you know? us now have to learn to work together eventually, or we are all going to end up dead. I'm more than happy to take a step aside to help anyone here, and I feel like I've proven that. But if these two don't get on the same page, then honestly, they'd be better working alone. And they would then end up dead. And then we would end up dead. I don't like where this is going. Not at all, but yeah, the only, I've... the only way they're gonna work together is if they can get their shit in check. Whether they agree or disagree with each other, they need to learn to be civil. Because I can't yeah. take another night of this. I will kill someone. Please, just don't kill me. <laughs> if you have to kill anyone, <laughs> you know... Yeah. Well, I'll let you. Let's, you let's, let's, not, let's not kill anyone, okay? Sh look, come on. <laughs> we'll be fine, Nico. Worst case scenario, I'll have you flip the coin on which one gets it. Oh my god. What now? I don't want to decide who gets to live, who gets to die. That's. <laughs> let's just talk. Let's yeah. just talk with those two, okay? I'll go speak with Kazim. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. All right. <sighs> well, as you guys leave the room, Kazim, you praying to Paylor? I'm gonna sure as hell try. I'm you, sorry, and, that's just... and when I don't get an answer, <laughs> I think I'm dialing up somebody else. <laughs> as you sit there with your guardian emblem in your hands, praying a little bit harder, hoping to get some kind of answer. Once again, the room begins to kind of fade out. But this time you do feel that warm light showering over you as you look in front of you and you do see the very large statue statue that is Paylor. His face glowing a blinding light so you can't quite look him in the eyes and you hear his booming voice and go, ha, passing up on temptation. I see you returning, young one. Is that some sort of test, man? One that was unintended. I don't know why Lyra feels the need to meddle. Lyra? Indeed. Man, Misty's a way better name for her. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Paylor, I need some fucking guidance here, man. Ask. I'm sorry, I said the fuck word. Uh, <laughs> Paylor, I need some guidance here, my guy. Every time. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. <laughs> Damn, just can't be talking up to Holy people. Shit. Just fucking cracks I, me. <laughs> I don't do formalities. I'm just it's imagining this never bird trying... for formalities. Okay, I'm just trying to imagine this bird speaking to a literal god in this way. Uh, okay. I need, sorry. Okay. I, okay. I, I need. To, I need some fucking help. Oh shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 okay. Back in. <clears throat> Paylor sits there, staring, looking down on you, and goes, "Ask, my child." Can you give me answers for what I should be doing? You see him, kind. Of, you you see him, kind of just stand there for a second. You can feel his eyes kind of gazing at you, and you just hear the question. What would you like out of life? I'd like it, personally. I don't know if this is something you can do. I'd like it if the Sunbeam wasn't such a grade-A major asshole. Uh, I'd like it if I could get some fucking recognition from Terran for all the hard work I put in and not get taken off this damn case. I mean... Perhaps I should, if a I, child I mean, of Paylor was more respectful to those of authority, perhaps he'd have the standing in which he wishes. Why should I show them any respect, dude? Like, because I, I, I was have raised. decided, and you hear the booming voice echoing throughout the entire blackness that is around you. Blackness, huh? It's all dark around you. Except for him. He's the only beacon of light anywhere. You don't see anything else except for his light. It sounds almost as if you're some kind of empty chasm as it reverberates off the non-existent walls. Taylor, let me break it down for you, man. Okay. I was fucking raised here by these guys. Never seen a paycheck from them until I worked at the flow. I've got nothing but disrespects coming my way. You telling me I should respect them back? I don't know anything other than these guys disrespecting me, man. I you... appreciate you being like my god and shit, but <laughs> honestly, respect's a two way street. You are no mere or nothing more than a scribe they are my voices and my hands you, well, your hands you... are disrespecting me you kind of see him take a step back and kind of cock his head a little bit and he goes i am a god and you hear the it echoing off the voices and he goes you disrespect those in which i put in authority you disrespect me yourself I'm sorry. I'd like to apologize. I, believe I got one more question for you, though. Ask. What happened earlier, man? When I called you and Lyra answered? What happened? I am not yours to answer every beck and call. I see how it is. All right. I believe penance is due for your disrespect amongst the church and your disrespect amongst me. And you see his hand kind of going above you and you see these weird flakes of light kind of coming off of your feathers as that golden color amongst your feathers you're used to seeing kind of dulls a little bit. And you hear him say, you will learn your place in the world your child or you will lose it and everything kind of and you see this big flash of light and as everything kind of calms down you look around and see you're back in the room and you kind of look down at your feathers that seem a lot duller than normal normal that probably no one else would probably notice maybe but it's definitely a big notice to you all right so after that happens, you hear a knock at your door. 
Who is it? It's me. I'll go open the door. You alright, Kazine? You look like you've seen a ghost. No, I was just talking to an asshole. What's up, Silas? Uh... I may have a favor I need to ask of you tonight. And know that if you fulfill this favor, I will compensate you in any way, shape, or form that you deem necessary. But this is for the benefit of the investigation. Honestly, no compensation necessary. You've saved my life too many times to count. What, what, what do you need? You may take that back when you hear what I ask of you. Oh, God damn it! Don't say that to me, Silas. What do you need from me? And you didn't hang out with Mistrix tonight. So about that conversation, huh? <laughs> Let's, uh... Wait a... Don't fix gold! What? What? <laughs> First of all, six gold? Really? You're gonna undersell me on that? <laughs> Second of all, okay. oh my God. what do you? What, how does me hanging out with Mistrix tonight help the investigation? Oh there God. is something Nico and I need to do, but I feel like. If we split each other too much, we will have another situation like we had in Rivers Run. So I will go with Nico and we will do what business needs done. And you will go with Miss Drix and make sure neither of you get killed. And perhaps you know the city, you know the people in some respect far better than I. Perhaps we can find the anchor before whatever is looking for the anchor finds us. So you just want me and her to search around and try to find the anchor if we can? Do whatever you think is best. But please don't kill each other. I know you two don't see eye to eye, but we are in this together. We agreed that in Rivers Run. What are the two of you doing that's important enough to not also be looking for this. We're looking into the nightmare situation and Heron gave me a lead. Since, right. he didn't, since he gave it to me privately and didn't give it to us when the whole group was there, I assume it's something that's on a... The more people that know it, the more people could be in danger. We know what... We know minds can be read. At least if they find me and Nico, you guys will be a little more protected. If they find you, me and Nico will be a little more protected. All right. I'll work with Mistrix. We'll try to find this thing. I appreciate it. All right. I value your your teamwork and all this. I may not be alive if not for you. Well, while you guys are finishing up your little bromance that seems to be going on, <laughs> we go downstairs and Mistrix, you've just stormed out. You've walked down the stairs. You decided to play some music, right? Uh, yeah. Have you got your weird drink Yes, milk, charcoal. vodka, and charcoal or something. Yes. So he brings you your odd concoction as you sit there. Please roll for performance. Dear Lord. May the loot gods be with me today. Actually, let's play the liar today. Ooh. Yeah, we'll be fancy. That is not what I'm looking for. Thank you. Well... Okay, it's a 19. It's not bad. Okay, what are you playing? Uh, probably playing... Kind of like... An ode to the memories that I have. Okay. So as you are, you know, sitting there and playing your 
music uh, amongst the group. It's not necessarily so as upbeat as it was before. It's much more kind of solemn, almost homesick, if you will, is kind of the feelings you're mustering when you're playing it. And the rest of the group that's kind of there, they are quite enjoying it. It's not as lively as some of your other performances, but it is still... Well, later later in the night, so I figured a little a more mellow It's kind much of thing. more beautiful and magical, if you will, uh, compared to the rest. As, you, as you're sitting there playing and you see a couple other people are kind of coming in, perhaps to sit down with maybe dates or after a long day to kind of unwind and relax with a drink, you see a couple more people trickling in through the door as you're playing, and you see coming down the stairs is Nico. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, well, Nico, he'll be going down the stairs. He hears that she's playing and uh, he will actually join in and uh, he will sing a very soft tune about a small kitty who is brave, but alone and afraid and needs her friends to this be should, able to rest peacefully. This should be interesting. Uh, roll mm -hmm. for roll for performance. I have okay. great performance bitches. Let's go. Uh, that is, let's see, 18 plus 5, 23 total. It, it, it's weird how you guys are able to almost harmonize over the music together. And you do see that a lot of the patrons that have kind of come in, it was like three or four. It's kind of gone up to about like eight or nine. I see maybe a tenth kind of peering in as you all kind of turning to you and watching you guys play and sing together. Uh, Mr. you're feeling that spark immediately again is it's welling up inside you that not only is he so exotic, but he's also musically inclined. Ooh. You're refusing so many times. Huh? You're, you, you, you guys have a beautiful show amongst yourselves and you look over, you just see that the bartender is kind of passing around another tankard, perhaps to collect some more gold and tips for you guys as you were enjoying it. And as you guys kind of begin to like kind of saunter out and lower the tone coming down and end your song, you do hear small bits of applause coming from everyone around you. And the uh, bartender kind of walks over with a nice little plate of uh, little meal for you guys and goes, that was absolutely beautiful. You guys are phenomenal. You should tour. That's partly what we're doing. Yeah. Well... <laughs> I hope that you guys continue to play with us tonight because that, the, keep it up. You're doing great. And he hands you these little plates and goes, take a break. Uh, you're doing phenomenal. Just relax for a second. He brings you another of your drinks and Nico and he brings you over an ale as you guys, nice little, little like flank steak with little mashed potatoes and some cut up veggies. It's beautiful. You guys, and Mistrix, you haven't had a meal this kind of nice. Nico, it's much better than what you're used to on the normal reg now, but mm. it's delicious. So probably while we're sitting there, like it, in between bites, Mistrix is going to kind of look over at her drink and just kind of the smile that she's almost constantly wearing because she is a bard. She puts on the happy face. I am charming. I am enthralling listen to my song it is life but when she's looking at her drink she kind of like zones into the little bubbles coming out of the charcoal and everything just kind of like drops on her face and it's more of a i wouldn't say frightened but a why is this kind of look and then she'll zone back in and just act like everything's fine nico will put a hand on top of her paw and he will look her deep in the eyes and uh, are you all right my strix i'm good um everything's fine are you okay we are not fine my strix none of us are in full honesty I, I Look, do want to apologize for everything. I, I'm, I'm a little scattered at the moment. I mean, I understand you. Like, honestly, this like this past two we like week week and a half. It's been 
the most frightening I've been ever around. I don't blame you. I... I mean... To be honest with you, I wasn't frightened until the portal. <sighs> it was pretty scary, wasn't it? That's the odd part. It wasn't really scary. It was... familiar. Well, what do you mean? It, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Mistrakes, we are friends. We will continue to be friends. Yes, but we have more important things than my mental state. We're fine. Everything is fine. I, w I would love to disagree. You know, like, I, I think like, you know, though the we're burden supposed I to have do this. Though the burden I have oh. are disagreements, I have saved him. I would do not wish him harm. <laughs> Uh, I've wasted yeah, about, enough ab about that, that man. Ab about that bird, <laughs> you know. Look, look, he is a bird. I'm sorry. It's not meant as an insult. It is. It's my brain. Just like <sighs> Silas. Yes, Silas is Silas, but Silas is York. And you are the dark one, the shiny one. There, there's. I don't know how I'm to explain it. It's, it's not. Our sweetie. It's it's not that. Yes, I know that that's part of your race, and yes, I know that's part of his race and part of Silas's race. And I'd never mean it as an insult to Kazim. It's just my brain. Well, have you told him that? I've that tried every time things? I try to tell him things. He goes all birdie and panic. <laughs> <laughs> She's literally gonna Look. do the motions of like, Arr! but like flappy. <laughs> Look, Miss Rex, I honestly did not want to ask you for this because I feel like, in a way, like you have a right to just not like someone. But it's not that I, I don't like him. I wouldn't save him if I didn't like him. See. You know, maybe tell him that. You know, like, yeah. But then look, we need to stay friends. Like, more now, more important than ever. Like, we need, we really need to get our shit together. Like, all of us, honestly. It's hard. Like, to I don't get like my shit Kazim. together when I can't sleep. <sighs> Sweetie. Sweetie. He will like put like his arm on her shoulder. If you ever need anything, you can talk to us. You are not alone with this. Like we are all in this together. Yes, but once this is over, everyone goes their separate ways. And where does that leave me? Traveling alone with my dreams and my brain and the voices and everything that I don't want. So it's best to just put it away. Sing a happy song and let it all be what it is. But it is. doesn't have to end this way. I mean, what, what's to say that we can, you know, still continue hanging out? Because Do something Kazim together. is part of the higher. Well, how how is that going for him? How, how is that going for him? I mean, yeah, he, shittily, me, but but like... he also doesn't have the charisma that we do. He's not very charismatic. You have to admit that. He's not very charismatic. Yes, he's a pretty bird. Like a canary, but... <laughs> Once again, not meaning it is an insult because we are surrounded by bird people. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Miss Riggs, <laughs> for someone who has such a server Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh I feel like this needs to be said. Do it. Uh let me see. What is your passive perspe uh perception? Me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't fucking breathe. <clears throat> Pop. Okay, Nico, Pop. you don't <laughs> Nico, you don't notice it, but every other Aarakocra in the fucking bar is staring at Mistrix after repeatedly saying the word bird and saying there's so many bird people around here. And then she's gonna like literally be like, but it's not an insult! Oh, you can't do this. It's not 
<laughs> I've been around this many feathered avian entities. She, you can see that she is like struggling very hard to not say the word bird. Miss Trick, for someone with a silver tongue, like your words are really harsh it's, sometimes. It's the cat. I'm sorry. You, you do hear the uh, bartender kind of try to explain, like, well, she is, she is not from around here. When's the last time you've seen a tabaxi? They probably don't know. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. You see a couple of them kind of ease off, but a lot of them about sitting at the tables are just kind of eating their meals, staring directly at you. <laughs> Yes, I feel your eyes in the back of my head, you feathery, beautiful creatures. That sounds like looking around and just like, what you're talking about? <laughs> I promise you, the cat, uh... the tabaxi feline instinct says, ooh, bird. And she's literally going to like get the wide eyes that cats get when they see something go by and then zone back in and be like, and I know that you're, how, how is it said, Aarakakra? Bleh. It's hard to say as a cat, okay? Eric you, you, yeah. you, you hear a dwarf in the back cat of giggling. It's hard. <laughs> He's at the far end. You see him, like, covering his face, <laughs> fucking dying of laughter watching this whole exchange. Why, you look up and you see the bartender kind of looking away. You see him kind of chuckling a little bit as you're just dying up there. Uh, I'm so you know, why, don't you just, why, why don't you just call him by name, you know? That's gonna be easier. It's not, though. I mean, look, I don't like necessarily the guy all that much. He gets on my nerves sometimes, yes, but he's still he's a very, friend. He's very in his own brain. And I think that's very <sighs> dangerous for all of us. He thinks as a cleric for Paylor and himself, not as the cleric of Pelor bringing light to the people. I can speak about religion, per se, but... I hate I'm, religion. I'm sure... I'm a cat with no religion. But, from what I've heard, they are supposed to be bringing light to the people. And I think that's why he has an issue with all of his higher-up... sun grand, shiny people. It looks, I. But anyway, I came down here to ask. Why do you want me to spend favor. time with the? Why do you yeah. want me to spend time with them? <laughs> Look, I'm a little scatterbrained. I'm sorry, I get off on tangents very easily. No, easy. no, no, it's <laughs> fine, sweetie. You're fine, okay? It's just that uh, we really need to look for the gem. We absolutely need. And Kazim, he's, he's lived the here one his entire life. Care. Well, no, I, I'm pretty sure he do. does care. I'm pretty sure he does care, and he knows those people. The people best. Like he know he knows this things. place in and out. People taking my shiny things doesn't go very well with me, especially when the shiny things can be very bad for others. This is why I think you should go and look with Kazim. The two of you, you know how it looks like. You you you've held it before. You will recognize it. Kazim, he knows the people here. He knows the places, he knows where someone, if they stole it, might want to either pawn it off or whatever. Like, but why he me? knows this place. Like, I understand that I know it, but he also has seen it. He knows what it is. Why can't the thing is, one of you go with him and be bodyguard? He can't go alone, and okay. I already will be preoccupied with... Okay, what about the giant? The giant's not preoccupied. That's the thing. Silas and I are going to um, investigate the whole terror lady. The whole, uh, you know, terror but Sarah. I want to investigate the terror lady. I think it'd be funny to put her in my dreams and then she'll be in the plains and then it'll be funny. She just kind of like goes off on her own. Oh own my thing. god. <laughs> sweetie, <laughs> sweetie, sweetie. And then she'll get lost and no one will ever know and we'll be fine. Sweetie, breathe. Okay? Breathe for me. This is... <laughs> You're just winding yourself up, one issue at a time. I pro next time we're gonna investigate. I promise you'll be the first one to go with us, okay? But we can't split no. one to one, and I I feel like you and Kazim have 
some things you need to talk about. I will apologize to him. I'm not asking you to apologize to I him. I mean, you don't have I to do that. I will apologize to know. him if he tells me that he likes the song that I made for him. If he tells me that he likes the song, then I will go with him. I if not, then loved he it. can take one of the guards from the fucking area and go with them. Because I get nothing out of spending time with him because he doesn't like me. Look, if you do this for me, I will... <laughs> an eye for an eye, right? Like, you do some, you do this for me, and I, if you need anything, I will do something for you, right? If you want me to perform with you on stage next time, I won't say no, okay? One walk at night with the feathered acquaintance. Yeah. And I get a song. Yeah. Agreed. She's going to put out her paw like, yes. <laughs> uh, Nico hates making deals. <laughs> but sure, sure. He will he will grab your hand and uh, he will shake it. Okay. Then it is agreed. I will. Yeah. Deal with the. You're gonna. She literally almost says it and goes. With Kazim. Thank you. And like it does like a little chill, and she's like, "I'm going to go back to playing music now because brain." Silas, Kazim. You can do that, sweetie. I assume that you guys are gonna start coming downstairs. Yeah. Okay. So as you finish up your conversation and begin to play, you're welcome to roll a performance check if you'd like to like to figure out uh that is a unnatural 20 okay so you play whatever you'd like to play i would like to play a song and dedicate it to silas because why not okay <laughs> uh-oh what, what, what kind of song is this well we're still playing the lute so it's not gonna be like hard rock <laughs> and it's okay. not gonna be like gangster it's gonna be more <laughs> like the a friend with a cause who seems lost in his cause, but there are people there for him, like to help him. Okay. Okay. So as you guys are coming downstairs, you're hearing this beautiful song kind of coming uh, down off of the lute. Um, you see Nico kind of sitting there, sipping his drink, staring at Mistrix, you do. You guys do notice that there are a couple Aarakocra sitting at tables, staring at Mistrix for some reason. You're not sure why. You do see the dwarf, kind of closest to the door, <laughs> hiding his face, giggling, laughing pretty hard. Wonder what that's all about. As you walk up to the booth, and you guys sit down, and the bartender kind of walks over and gives you guys some drinks. Just a water for me. I've had my one for the day. Oh, so so sorry. And he kind of takes that back. No, no, and starts it's fine. Your water. And brings it back over to you really quickly and sits, sets it down. I'll 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 bow my head in respect and then he kind of bows. Thinking. He bows back and goes very welcome. Goes back off to his work. And I'll sort of look over at Miss Rex and raise my raise my tanker to her. She'll kind of like gently nod, but like not overly show because mm -hmm. she is performing. So yeah. So you guys are sitting there in silence for a little bit as she plays, you know, it's relaxing. And as it comes to a close, what are you guys going to do? I'm, I'm going to go over and get a thanks to Silas, I think. Yes. How did it go? Well, I feel like I sold my soul, but it worked. So, Yeah. You're a wall. Cool. Haven't you done that already? Oh. Hey, hey look. <laughs> that's, that's not how this works, okay? <laughs> wow, wow, that. What, why is everyone. Why is the dwarf losing their mind over there? No, don't, 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 don't. She's. So, Mr. is gonna walk up at that point and just change <laughs> instruments and just look at Silas and be like, I'm gonna fix that. Give me a second. <laughs> Oh God. What did she oh do? God. What did you do? 
So, oh. we are gonna play a new song. And we're gonna use the drum. And it's no. gonna be a fun song about no. the fact that basically part of it will go like my fine feathered friend is an era Cochran and I've insulted him many times. It is not what I intended with the best of misdeeds. I am sorry for all I have offended. Ooh. Okay, that's hella nice. Intriguing. It's an apology song, okay? <laughs> with the drum. Is he oh my god. god. 22. It's not terrible. It, it's it's pretty good. You got you see a couple. Made of, up on the spot. <laughs> you see a couple of the people at the bar bobbing their heads. You see that a couple of the birds kind of get, they, they stop paying attention to you. You see the dwarf over there kind of enjoying his meal, drinking his beer, having grand old time. So <laughs> you just made an apology video. Yeah, yeah, and it worked. It for the first time in history, look, it worked. Look, I tried. Oh, sailors. Yes. I really hope they'll both not die tonight. I really do. Uh, they will be fine. We will be fine. Somehow, I doubt that. Have I let you down before? Well, no, not necessarily, but our track record of being able to survive danger that we put ourselves into is not very high. So, you oh, know. Hopefully when you're fighting to save the world, danger tends to find you. But. If at any point it is too much. I know. We still have access Look, to the portal. You can go home whenever you want. I'm already in this together with you guys. And I can't just let you guys get killed off while, what, covered in the house with Freya and Nicholas and... Cause I, I can't do that. You guys do so much to help for, like... No reason, like literally, no one is making you do this. You you want to help, and I want to help too. We'll figure out what happens tonight, and I'll say this to Kazim as well. We will decide our next move when we reconvene in the morning, and we'll go from there. We're planning way too far ahead. We need to deal with what's right in front of us. What's right in front of us is a missing jewel and a potential lead. Small steps, right? Small steps. Kazim, if you don't see us in the morning, we're going to the mine. That's all I'm going to say for now. If we don't see you in the morning, I will search every corner of this block and the next block, and if I don't find you, then you will hear my rage. Start looking with the bard. Alright. I'm assuming my song is done now. Yes, your song is done as you sit back down and join the group. I assume Nico told you the plan in some respect. She's gonna look over at Kazim and be like, trying not to say the word. Kazim. You call me if you call me bird one Kazim. more time. Kazim, please. Yes. It is very difficult for me. I do deeply apologize. I never mean it as an insult, ever. Do not intend it. One hundred and twenty percent. Do not intend it as an insult. It is cat-like brain, just like he is the giant and the orc. I was <laughs> just going to point at Silas and then look at oh, Silas. I going to win so never, little bit. <laughs> never, never intended as insult. That's like I me looking at him and calling crossed, him greeny, man. Cross <laughs> my heart. <laughs> like, cross my heart, take my eye. I am a cat. You can pull me by the tail. It is not meant as an insult. It's... <laughs> and I am deeply, deeply, deeply sorry. It doesn't matter if you mean it to be insulting, if it is insulting. 
I'm sorry I mean, for arguing with you. You've I, called I, me the cat before, so... Have I? Mm-hmm. No, I think that was me. I think I did that. Mm, I think he's done it once. Uh, I don't recall. If I did, that it's my bad, and I am sorry. But I don't, I don't take it as insult, though, because I am indeed a cat. It is kind of insulting to say that. Again, that's like me looking at anybody and just calling them by their physical appearance. Well, it is not intended, and I deeply apologize, and I will do my best to not do that again. And I am sorry for shooting down your ideas. It's, it was unfair of me for immediately turning down your ideas. That's fine. I'm very scatterbrained currently, and I deeply apologize for everything, especially my very rash and impromptu interactions of cutting a random stranger and pilfering their horse. <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, deep inhale at that one. And... I'm just gonna look around my shoulder with no guards anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're all for perception. We don't have nearly as much leeway in this town as we did. 20! Run. We've got to be careful. <laughs> yeah, there's... <gasps> with a natural? Yes! Yeah, there's absolutely no guards in here, but you do, you do kind of see the bartender kind of, as soon as you say pilfering their horse, you kind of see them stop and, like, look over at you for a second and go, just go back to work. <laughs> it's an inside joke. <laughs> Yo, Karma, I think you owe us a drink, though. Yee. I'm going to send you a picture of it, Hands are up. On it. Hands are up. I'm sending a picture of it. There you go. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Chase it down. Thank you, Katie. Mm. All right. Is there anything else anyone would like to do before we kind of speed along here? I'd like to order some fucking dinner. All right. <laughs> so he kind of brings you over the same plate that they have. Uh, he he also brings over one for you, Kazim. That is just a simple plate with some nice flank steak on it, some mashed potatoes and a couple of chopped up veggies and stuff. I uh, do want to kind of ask like look at him before he leaves and kind of like gently touch his shoulder and be like any inklings of my my jewel with like the big sad cat eyes like oh i'm i'm so sorry no i haven't heard anything about it i i've tried to see i've heard a couple of the miners have come in here but uh, they talk about jewels but nothing that seems to be kind of sphere shape and nothing that seems to be out there, if that makes sense. Just kind of the normal things that they talk about. Well, the other night, it, it was when I had the great showing mm -hmm. here the other night. Would there be anyone in particular you would see as shady to have t tried to take such a thing that I should look into? Um... We were pretty busy with all the, with the your show was fantastic and it grew drew a pretty big crowd and I, I was I think I was a little just a little too busy to really see anything that was really going on. I thought we managed to keep your table pretty clear. Um, well, I mean, in general, like if there's someone that you typically have almost every night or someone that you typically don't let in that would have came in. Not generally around in this area, just because anyone of that kind of ilk is generally not allowed in the Sky District at all, if that makes sense. Just because if they're willing to do kind of those shady things around a tavern, they're probably allowed willing to do it at the light. Oh, so, yeah. So we kind of, they, they tend to not really be around the Sky District all that much. So okay. no, nothing that I can really say. No, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. I, I'm just concerned. Okay, well, don't worry. I'm going to keep my, I'll keep my ears open for you and I'll let you get back to you as soon as I hear something. Thank you. Mm. No luck then. Sorry, I tried. One way or another, we'll find it. But it's something that's been on my mind. That's two anchors. Assuming the things we've interacted with are both anchors, which I think, worst case scenario, we should. At least one we can be mostly positive about. Yeah. So there's potentially 10 out there, of which we don't know whether they've been gotten to already. Mm -hmm. Do we think that the people of the light would keep tabs on these anchors at all? I mean, they probably should, shouldn't they? 
I mean, he did know what it was supposed to look like. Because if we can get some messages out there to anyone who does know about them. Just so we can get an idea of how many have been damaged. Obviously that ri that risks interception. But I think we need to be looking at the wider picture and... If we lose this anchor and if it is broken... We could be dealing with the last one for all we know. I honestly... Yes. I'm not sure when I would have lost it. I didn't sleep. It was on my person the entire time. I don't remember... Anyone being... Are, are we sure we lost it here in the city, though? Could we have lost it, like, on the way... Like, to the city? Like, in, back in the dungeons? It was in the backpack. The backpack doesn't have a hole in it, as far as I know. And plus... And even if it but, did, it got replaced yeah, with it was replaced. another gem. Of an almost equal weight, which I probably would have felt the difference in weight. So it had to have been a really slick... Rogue-like move. All magic. I don't like any of this. Question, Karma. We really Karma. need to find it. Was the cylinder thing that the scrolls were in still in the backpack? Yes. If you put it in there, it's still in there. Yeah. So, and it doesn't look like it was affected at all by the nope. change? Nope. The only thing that it was different that you could tell was the stone just looked different and the wrapping on the stone was the same the whole shebang everything everything else was perfect but the only thing i'm, that I'm you're... Gonna, gonna tell you guys this i'm gonna be like everything was the same the way i wrapped the ball was the same the way the cylinder was in there was the same there was no difference i think that no one physically took it i think we're dealing with magic is that Kazim, are you aware of any kind of magic that could did we sleep while we had the crystal no. So it couldn't have been I any kind of like dream thing. Crystal? No, because we got the crystal. We had the. F there was the fight. You ran ahead. I died. Spiders. <laughs> Spiders. Yeah. That, no, that you died before the crystal. Yeah, but I mean, I, I died. That, but that's that all happened this morning, effectively. Yeah. yeah. Then we got to town. You did the performance, and then you went to talk to Terran, I guess. No, pretty much... didn't we meet you at the jeweler? Yeah, we went to the jeweler. We did go to the jeweler, but nobody was in there with us we other the than the jeweler. You didn't touch the backpack. Because that I mean, backpack is different than my backpack. What yeah. we... I mean, just the doppelganger and us, right? Mostly, well, yeah. Well, aside from other creatures that are looking for anchors. So, there's... The people at the flow know about the Incas, because that's where Kazim initially learned about it. In a... I'm assuming we're whispering all of this while there's. Oh, absolutely! I'm, I'm gonna say for be like, I'm yeah. gonna say for a lot of this, you guys are trying to whisper yeah. and keep it down. I'm so, not gonna I'm not gonna make everyone yeah. aware of what you're doing all of the time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, guys, uh, the Incas. <laughs> the shiny rock that I had. Yeah. Um. So, the flow knows about it, if nothing else, because Kazim, you learned it about it there right yeah well i learned about it in the flow when i was researching the astral sea um just kind of chills oh. i mean we've been here not for so long right but when we arrived here and you know spent some time there was already rumors about presumably us what to say that the doppelganger didn't get here faster or, God forbid, actually followed us and we didn't just notice? Or if the doppelganger's already here because some of them used the teleporter and then sabotaged it. True, but I've... as of following us, we kind of collapsed their entry point, so that's a little... I've got an idea. Shoot. One of the scrolls that we have is a scroll of Identify. Mm-hmm. We might be able to figure out the make of this, who made it, and if we can find them in the city. I could actually take it to the jeweler. 
let's keep this small. Yes, I, but we've we, we don't know if we can here. trust the jeweler. Also, she's probably closed by now, right? No, but uh, Misty, you said you were going to see them in the morning. Yeah. Because we've. You, there's but I'd rather not waste a scroll if we can just go somewhere and be like, "Hey, do you know if this looks like anybody handiwork that you know of?" And if she says no, then you can use your scroll. But I'd rather not use it if it's not needed. We do know that the one we have right now is safe. It's literally on my back. We don't know the if The one it... we have right now is a fake. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So if so... it's artificial, and she can identify maybe not who, but how it was made, then we can report that to Terran. All right. Unless anyone has any better ideas, because we can just say, "Hey, we've you know we found this jewel with the others," but the you know. Well, I Kazim can take it to it. her. I can take it to her now tonight, and tell her that someone has taken my actual jewel, and I want to know what, like, how this was made, so that it maybe helped me find mine. And pass it off as like a family heirloom or some shit. Hmm. Is it's like evening now, right? Yeah, you say it's check. about. Um, I'm gonna say it's about four thirty-five ish. The sun is almost completely down as it is fall. Sun kind of sets a little bit earlier as it's starting to get fairly dark outside so yeah it, it's evening it's not super late but it is beginning to get quite dark do we want to go now and start this grand adventure me and nico don't need to make our way to the to our location until midnight so we have time okay we can stay here listen and maybe and you guys go right i don't think the last time we split up it didn't go oh. well <laughs> well, if things go awry this time, um, I'm going to just investigate. I'm going to try not to be very physical toward anyone, but uh, my, my sword kind of does the pew pew with the thunder and the lightning and good stuff. So yeah, you'll know. Let's go see if the jeweler's open. Okay. So you guys, are you all going together? I think You're the plan like is we that... Should. Yeah, okay. yeah. So you all, you Let's all, go. you all get up and start walking out as you uh, exit out, and you 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 do see that the bartender kind of look beckons you, uh, Mister, and goes, I "I'll keep the tips until you come back. I'll keep them safe." And, Thank you. And you start uh, walking out into the cool night air as you see the sun is almost completely set. You do see that there is still kind of a a light purple amongst the entire sky as you see those clouds kind of rolling over those beautiful mountains on either side you see that there are these very pretty kind of almost golden uh lights kind of in front of every one of these buildings kind of popping up everywhere um and it seems to almost illuminate the ground perfectly so you're able to see every kind of nook and cranny and seeing in the light you guys do notice that it's very it's gorgeous actually where it almost seems completely perfect as you begin walking up to the jewelers which we do actually have a name did i give you guys a name for it no it, no it's the the enchanted setter that's what it's called mm. yeah putting so, it in the notes yep enchanted setter so as you guys are walking up uh, you do see that it is still open you see her kind of as you peer in through the windows she's turned around at her workbench still kind of frivolously uh, furiously kind of working away probably on the gem that you uh, asked her to kind of break up and stuff. Do you all want to wait out here and just let me and Kazim go in, or? We can do that. That way if something looks suspicious passing by, tap Absolutely. on the window and we'll go. Absolutely. Okay. So Nico and Silas are staying outside? Yeah. Okay. So as you guys kind of enter, you hear the bell above the door kind of ring and you see her kind of quickly turn around and goes oh well i wasn't expecting you guys so so quickly I, I i'm not quite done with all that stuff yet oh no 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 that that's that's perfectly fine um i'm 
I'm a little concerned, and I was hoping to ask for your help in something. Oh, absolutely. Any way I can be helpful? Absolutely. What, what, what seems to be the problem? I have an heirloom that I keep with me that I keep in my little bag. Okay. It is very near and dear to me, and mm -hmm. it has come to my attention that just after earlier today, it is no longer the real one. Okay. Um, I was wondering if if I show it to you, could you possibly help me, if anything, tell how it was made so that maybe I can find the person that took it and she's going to like get the little like, fake teardrops oh, kind of... Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, I will do everything that I can. Absolutely. Bring bring it here. Let me, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Okay. She's going to like hand the bag to Kazim and be like, hold the bag. I'll get it out and I'll take it to her. Okay. She's going to like gently reach in and take it in her hands and and kind of keep it in front of her and look over her shoulder and be like, and promise me that it stays with us because this is something that I don't want people to try to come after me for. Absolutely, dear. I I, I have a very strict client's professional confidentiality. Don't you and worry about it. Let, let's see it. Double check. There's nobody else in the building, right? No one else is in there. It, for, okay. Before you can tell, it doesn't look like many people ever go in there. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to be sure turns around with the the sphere and you see her eyes kind of glow she's like oh wow and she kind of may i be be very 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 gentle i'm very careful it may not be the right one but it, it's still precious trust me <laughs> sweetie she kind of picks it up and she goes it's a lot lighter than i would have expected it looks to exactly. be purely rosemary quartz let's see and she kind of quickly she goes through a couple drawers and pulls out a couple different of those uh, jewelers uh, kind of eyeball eye things. And she looks over and she goes, oh, OK, OK, I'm seeing I'm seeing. So here's something interesting I want to show you. You see how look at the surface here, how there's no like abrasions or anything like that. Generally, if it was cut or ground of any kind, you'd see sharp edges or some kind of abrasions. But it seems to be almost perfectly smooth. So that tells me it's either an expert, but looking at it she holds it up to the light and goes it seems to be almost magically done okay which is peculiar um from what i can tell and she quickly kind of brings over this lantern and she goes here's an interesting little thing you might be able to not know uh depending on where it grows you can actually shine a lantern through it and it can show you where it might have come from because each place has different mineral deposits and she kind of holds it up to the lantern and goes it does seem to be one from around this area if you can see those iron deposits in there and you can see the big striations there it's good oxygen and the minerals so it looks like it was someone somewhere around here it could be from either our mine or perhaps the surrounding area not pop it could be maybe somewhere close but from what i can tell it seems to be magically made of some kind it almost perfectly it seems almost perfect, actually. Oh, it's, it's quite... That, that, that's the issue, almost. That's... Yeah, that's interesting. You can see... Right here. If you look, you can see... And you see you're kind of pointing out, and so you see this perfect little kind of jagged line here. That mm -hmm. tells me that someone maybe... They may have missed this. You can actually tell, based on how it goes almost halfway through the crystal, you see that she's holding up to the lantern. You can see what she's pointing out now, this kind of weird crack. It sees... Obviously, it was broken off of something that was quite large, it seems. Perhaps it was grown quickly. So that tells me it was possibly in our mind, perhaps a little bit deeper in one of the better parts. There's probably some kind of score marks, but I can't I can't tell you anything about the maker. As you see, there's with no striations or abrasions for me to really evaluate. Yeah, it looks like it, probably magic of some kind. But, yeah, that's kind of all I can really give you, sweet. I'm so sorry. I wish I could help you more, but that's kind of all I can tell you. Oh, no, no, that helps a lot. That's actually more help than you could ever know. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. I, is, is there anything else I could really do to help? Um, if you hear anybody talking about such a thing as this, since it's so oddly specific... To have a sphere of this kind, would you, by chance, be able to tell the barkeep at? Oh, yeah, at abso the ab event? absolutely. And I, 
chances are if it's if it's an actual heirloom i'm the main kind of jeweler around here so i'll reach out to all my other little friends around here and see if maybe they've heard of something of is there is there any kind of identifying mark that might help us it is it is perfectly spherical perfect okay okay so it's perfectly like, spherical whereas, whereas this one isn't perfect and it has that slight off and it's a little heavier than that okay that that's perfect okay that's i'll i'll let i'll kind of also, reach my little feelers out for you if you find it mm -hmm. be ever so gentle and use gloves okay yeah we don't want to leave any prints or anything on it so we'll make yes. sure yeah okay absolutely thank you so much no not a problem not a problem she kind of looks over at kazim go and did you need anything do you know of any fences in the area? Like for... That kind of fence. Selling Before illegal you. goods? Yes. In case they took it. Roll for persuasion. With advantage because you of what you just said. Okay, that was almost, almost insane. Oh. Uh, persuasion? Oh yeah. That's a dirty 20. Ooh. Uh. You, you see her kind of kind of peek out the windows a little bit and she goes, so I I don't generally deal in those kinds of things, but you're not going to find that in the Sky District. I've heard these are rumors from my other kind of jeweler friends, and I've heard this from Meredith down at the mine. Uh, she told me that perhaps near the general store, uh, they they might have some actually, so you might be able to look around there. He might be able to give you a little... ask for oh, what was his name. Give me one second here. I I have an actual name. I swear to God, I just need to look for it. Ask for. Because when it comes to shape, huh? yeah, right. Sorry. Ask for Freyan. He he. I've heard he might know. How do you spell that? Just -R -A so I know. F R A Y apostrophe N. Oh. oh, you know him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. A as he might know. Sam, what, what is your name in case you go and tell the barkeep so that he knows to keep an eye out for you? My name is Zeril. Z-E-R-E-L. Zeril. Okay. I apologize for not asking sooner. That's very impolite. That's, o that's okay. How many? It's Sometimes it's hard to keep track. I've met a million people a day. And you are... Tricks. Pleasure tricks. And you... Kazim. Pleasure, Kazim. By the way, I'm still working. I'm I'm actually might be able to finish yours a little bit early, Kazim, with all those little uh, rough diamonds. So just make sure you guys come pick those up tomorrow. And trust me, Trix, you're going to love the design that I have for your little necklace. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Then with that, oh, hey, I will right. put the gem back in the bag and we will leave. Okay. Your friends are kind of waiting outside. And as we you guys mm. are kind of walking out into the night air once again, see, meeting up with your friends to speak of what you're going to be doing next. I think we're going to take our break there. We're just past the mm. two-hour mark, and yeah, we'll be right back, but I will leave it unmuted so that they can hear you guys. Hear our gossip and mm. our shit-talking each other. Let's and go. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway. And, and we're back. Yes. <laughs> As we were before, si uh, Nico and, or no, Mistrix and Kazim had just walked out as Nico and Silas were waiting outside to relay said information, and that's where we left off. What is happening? So, uh, Kazim. Look, I actually said your name this time! She's gonna, like, applaud herself. <laughs> um, you, uh, you seemed to have some sort of spark of recognition for the name... Yeah, he's um an old friend, an old fling. He's my buddy's dad. Oh, spicy. Let's uh Okay, so how do we want to start this? Let me do the talking. Do we want to go there now or do we want to fill these two in before we do this? Files, yeah, so that's what... Where are we going? I, I, I'm Ooh. assuming we're saying this to those other. Would you two. all like to go with us to go play with his friend's dad? 
Who is don't his friend's dad? Play. Where are we going? Why are we going okay. there? So, you shiny, know my buddy. shiny rock. Hold on, hold on. Shiny rock. Magic made. Shiny rock not perfect. Shiny rock brushed. Uh, okay. In English Lady this in time. the store. <laughs> lady in the store said that she will keep an eye out, but it is magic made. It has a very, very, very vital flaw. Um... Other than that, she could only tell us that it was from, like, around this area, like, in the mines here, close by, within, like, just a short radius. Which I know isn't super helpful, but that also tells us that if it was rushed and made here, maybe, just maybe, when we picked up the other one, someone knew? And they were like, oh shit, let's make a new one and trade it out. Someone potentially knew we were coming and that we were taking a shortcut. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Which leads me to believe that the doppelganger was probably already here. And he knew that by fucking up the portal, we'd want to take the quickest way. So we took the shortcut and we picked up the thing that he wanted and we brought it right to him. Or her. Whatever. Them. There. Gender neutral. So, who is this father of a friend? You remember Jadal, the foreman we met down in the mines? It's his yeah. dad. And well, we are going there because... The lady in the store... Fence. Yeah, the, he asked... Kazim asked the lady in the store if she knew any backwards trading that could be going on as to where the rock could be. There's a chance, albeit small, that whoever stole this wasn't looking be, to yeah. immediately destroy it and they were just looking to pawn it. Yeah, may not actually be our doppelganger, but... It's a small chance, but it's a chance. And if he, he doesn't have the crystal, then hopefully he'll be able to tell us well, if this is any familiar piece. There's also the upside of this that they could also know where more shiny red, well, shiny rose quartz things are. Possibly. Intel. We will we'll join you for that, and then, Nico, I think at best we make our way to the mine so that we're not late. Yeah. Yeah. But, alright, leave the way. After right. you, Mr. Feathered Friend. So you guys are heading Didn't to... Didn't you just call him Bird? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call him no, that. No, I looked at Silas directly. <laughs> so you guys are uh, heading to the... Fre heading to Freyan? Yeah. So you guys start wandering down as you see the kind of slow transition from the Sky District's kind of beautiful Aarakocra kind of architecture of the whites and the golds to the more kind of gray stone and more copper feel kind of steampunky more clockwork kind of ideal as you're going down and you, you see Kazim without like not even needing to think about it kind of turning every corner a little bit he he turns down this one street and you see this kind of what seems to be like a two-story building with a little bit of the second floor kind of sticking out perhaps there's a residence on up uh, outside and you see that there's a uh, what looks to be like a little sign with like a, a bag that just says Frayne's general goods as you kind of walk up to it. Are you guys just going to go inside? Okay. Assuming they did. I'm following his lead, so. So you see him kind of just walk out, walk into it immediately opening the door. And you as you, as you walk in, it seems very basic. There is are some very beautiful uh, kind of carved bookcases holding all kinds of different kind of goods you might need uh nico you immediately kind of recognize the kind of framework it, it seems to be mm. as like it came from the wood shop that was that you might have purchased yeah. that boat from uh earlier and as you guys are kind of looking around you, you don't really see anyone but then you see a little bit larger kind of more portly dwarf uh He's about like four, four, three, a little bit taller than other dwarves that you've seen with his long kind of gray bearded. He's taller yeah. than me. He sure is. <laughs> you see kind of braided beard with a couple beads in it. Uh, his hair is kind of slicked back with a kind of top knot almost on on top of his head as he's reading his book and he looks up and he goes, welcome. There is a face I haven't seen in a while. Hello, Kazim. How are you? 
I'm all right. How how how's the shop been, Fran? Oh, same old, same old. Not too many visitors coming around the Dwarven District, but we managed to keep afloat. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of here for your the the other side of your business. Other side? What? I, what do you mean? Let's not do this. Just let, let's just have a conversation. Of, of course. Yep. What can I help you look for? I, can you show him the crystal? We're looking for a twin to this lovely thing. She's going to like. How close are the other people around her? Like the group? Yeah. No, like, uh, like. Are we like in a little area where we're not gonna like show everybody the rock? Yeah, you, you when you walked in, you see that there was just uh, kind of a very smaller kind of dwarf, a much younger one. Perhaps he looks a little bit like Frayne because you assume that maybe he's another son that you he might have had uh, at some point that you kind of don't really know. It it seems to be uh, Frayne's younger youngest son uh he doesn't really seem to notice you guys kind of walk in as he's restocking shelves but you guys are far enough away he's behind some bookcases that no one else is really going to see what you got this guy doesn't look at all suspicious with the normal he looks normal dwarfy not yeah yeah he, 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 he's got some like brown kind of dark eyes you you do see okay. he, he's very the only thing that might might stick out is that he's not quite as dirty as the other dwarves perhaps he doesn't work as much in the in the mines kind of use us as a body shield Okay. And, like, open the bag and show him. I'm not going to get it out. I'm going to, like, open so the you, bag and show him. You kind of see him kind of peek in there and goes, you, you, you said you're looking for the twin? Yes. Okay. Um, I haven't, I mean, we don't really deal with jewels all that much. Uh, I haven't really seen anything quite like that. Someone has taken it, so it would be really recent. And you, 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 you think they would sell them? To me? We're thinking you may know anyone that would hear about it. You seem kind of look behind. Roll for persuasion. When I don't mix up the d20 for the d10, yeah. Uh, 17 with the bonus. Hold on. Boop. I'm not on the right page. I'm never on the right page. <sighs> um... 17 plus 7, so let's just say really good. So he uh, kind of looks behind and sees his son kind of still working. He kind of leans forward to all of you guys and beckons you to kind of get closer and goes, uh, well, if you're looking for stolen goods, I personally don't deal in them. However, I... And he kind of looks over at Kazim, kind of worryingly, may come into contact with a couple of goods that... The ownership might be questionable. Here, we're not here to do anything to harm your business. This is strictly a want to find the thing that belongs to me issue. You, you seem kind of like loosen up a little bit and he kind of goes, I haven't personally seen anything like this, but if it's been stolen and been sold, you probably want to go down to the warehouse area. Uh, you might want to talk to a man called Julian. He He's a little bit younger. He's much younger. And he looks over because he goes a little bit older than Dridal. And you'll see him. He's got a red beard. He's got red hair, a little bit tanner than the rest of us. He seems to work mainly just down there. You might want to go speak to him. He, he kind of has contacts that would be interested in things like that. So maybe he might have seen something. We appreciate your time, Fran. Honestly. I'm glad. I hope you guys find what you're uh, looking for. And Kazim, if I may, just keep that kind of between us. You know, Drudal and them, they, they don't really know. We, we don't know everything. what you're talking about. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. If, there, if there's anything, if there's anything else I can help you guys with, just, I got all kinds of goods in here. Anything you guys need? And he kind of seemed like shaking his head. I think that's about it. Actually, um, 
Potions? Guys, do we need some potions? I think I still have one health potion. I have one spare. Uh, Freyan, any chance you've got greater healing potions on you? Ah, uh, those are those are kind of hard to come by. There's not too many uh, herbalists around here. I've, I've got a couple regulars, uh, maybe one or two, just from passing traders that might have had extras, but I don't, I don't really have anything like that. We don't really have alchemy all that much around here. Yeah, I, I understand. Um, can I get just a couple of those potions? Sure, I've got, I've got uh, two of them, and as a friend, I'll, I can give them all. I, I usually sell them for about 50. I'll give them to you for about 25, if that's all right. 25 GP? Yeah. You got a deal. Fantastic, thank you very much. And he hands you just uh, two regular health potions. Sweet. If you do hear anything, would you let me know? I'm staying at the feathered bed. Oh, a friend of Kazim, I'll, I'll let you guys know anything. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Not a problem. Hey, and uh, and and Kazim, I think uh, I think I saw Jadal and uh, Sarid. I th think I saw them going into the uh, bar across the street. If you're interested in seeing them. And Terran? Sarid. I think that's the name of Sarid. Yeah, Sarid. Okay. Um. Or that oh. name is the other guy, right? He's that the guard. Yeah, he's he's his other uh, childhood friend. Okay, not the guy that I cut. No. Good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> A little frightened. Let's uh. Let's go talk to Julian. All right. So as you guys kind of uh, exit the store, uh, you you look out about. You hear the music kind of going on in the other. It's not quite as exquisite as yours, Mistrix, hey, as, you, as you're sitting. I want to balance that bard to a duel. Yeah, we're going to have a total devil went down to Georgia kind of deal going yes. on. Yes. Sweet. As you guys Kazim, are. Kazim, can I challenge <laughs> the bard? Please. Slight detour, but you can talk to your friends. We just lost Silas and Nico, right? They just went back up to the. Uh, after that, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna look at Nico well, and say, "Should we get going?" They're going down to the mm, mines. We'll shoot. Mistrix and I are also going down to the mines, but to talk to somebody else. Yeah, or, or if you're going, the warehouse area isn't right next. Isn't really oh, the mines. Sorry, it's, it, it, it's close, but not. You don't. You go in a different direction than they go. Hey, I guess I could pass it up this once. Yeah. If we want to be close in case they need us. As you're walking by, you're silently judging the music. Uh -huh. you're, you're hearing the missed yeah. notes for the songs that you're familiar <laughs> like, uh, with. Uh, <laughs> like, just like every time they play a wrong note, her ears are going to twitch like... Mm, mm. Alright, okay, so we'll, we'll, start, we'll start with you two. As you guys say your goodbyes, they kind of start wandering off and Kazim, you start heading towards the uh, warehouse area. You see that the stone and copper kind of buildings go into a more kind of industrial kind of look it kind of loses that copper decals and kind of going for more wooden obviously for more structure rather than it is for you know prettiness of it uh more functionality than anything else and you start walking down you're seeing uh, a couple of different larger kind of buildings being built with these huge just wooden doors that kind of slide open perhaps to make it easier to bring things in and stuff like that and you're seeing a bunch of different people kind of moving boxes around. Uh, either one of you want to make an investigation check or a perception check to see if you can find Julian anywhere? Uh, natural 20. I swear to God, it's the same die that's going to absolutely murder me. It, it I might. Was gonna say, the yeah. second you hit you're, combat. You're wasting them well, 20s well, on hand, this my stuff. My hands are up here. Yeah, I'm not trying to, guys. I promise you I'm not trying to waste these 20s. But Jesus H. Christ, I'll Mine's take them when I can get them. Um, I'm, I got it. I'm on it. <laughs> I send proof. And it's in a different spot this time. So you know it's not the same picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I bought I... this bottle. <laughs> this is an expensive bottle of tequila that I've already, I'm already already starting to piss welcome. through. So thanks, guys. You're Cheers. welcome, Misty. You're welcome. You chose this life. Cheers. <laughs> I did. This was entirely my fault because there hasn't been a single nat one. 
Not yet. <laughs> hey, I drank wait, with you on that wait, one. Okay. Wait till combat hits. Yeah, I mean, I did too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait till combat hits. <laughs> so, very quickly, you see a bunch of these other dwarves, and you see a couple gnomes. You even see a couple humans, surprisingly. You haven't seen very many of them. Kind of wandering around, carrying these large boxes up and around into different areas of the warehouse area, and kind of far off, maybe about 70-ish feet ahead of you guys, kind of off to a corner. You see him kind of standing there talking to somebody as he's, you know, standing in front of what maybe he, he's been working on. You do see a dwarf that matches the description of Julian that was given to you by Freyan. How do we want to approach this? Do you know him? No, I don't. Um, so do I need to be back market shady cat? Sorry, what did what did Freyan tell us about Julian again? That he he's the kind of the person that would know where to uh, get in contact with, you know, some stolen goods if possibly needed. He also did make it clear, like, don't tell him that Freyan's the one that told you about him. Just, you know, it might okay. mess mess with it because obviously you're a cleric of the light. Perhaps it was to try and make mm -hmm. sure that he doesn't look like a narc. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll go I, I have a feeling I'm in my cat. I'm in my commoner's clothes right now. I've taken off my robes. We could we we I, I'll, I'll go with that while you were kind of walk after he said that, I would say that maybe you kind of dipped off to a, a corner and maybe took off the top layer of the of the of the clerical clothes and underneath you would be wearing kind of normal clothes underneath it and maybe stuffed it in your backpack to kind of try and alleviate the stress that might be going down there as you're going up to him. Are you guys going to just walk up? Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, we need to make it very, we need to make it clear that we're not from the church. We're not narcs or anything. I mean, that's easy for me, but it's that easy for you. No. Do you want me to go talk to him and you just stay where you can hear it? Is there any, like, rafters above where he is? Um, there's not really any rafters above him, but you can, you, you see where he's standing, because it's kind of in a doorway of one of the warehouses. You do see that there's maybe this alleyway that you can kind of, like, tuck yourself in and maybe, like, lean against the wall that you might not look too suspicious while you're just kind of hanging out there and listening in. It, you, you... There is a spot there that you would assume is probably close enough to be able to hear what he's saying. I would like to hide there and listen in. That will take a stealth check. Of course. Do That's it. That's something I can do. Maybe. That face. <laughs> can I can I help him because I have a disguise kit? And like make him look a little rough so he doesn't look like a churchgoer. I like it. I'll give you advantage on that. Okay. Thank fucking God. You're what welcome. Was it? That is so much better. Uh, what was the first one? I'm curious. The first one was a natural one. Well, the uh, second one was a dirty twenty. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Plus three. So after after kind of mucking up his uh, feathers a little bit, maybe feel, matting them down with a little bit of I feel water. Like, yeah, I feel like I saw him and I was like. He doesn't look shady enough. Let yeah, me go you, you, up a little based bit. <laughs> on based on everyone around you, you do see that a lot of them are much more dirty and kind of grimy from a hard day's work. And Kazim is very clean and kind of well taken care of himself, uh, more more prepped for looking proper. So really you kind of gonna be like digging in the bag. I am so sorry that I have to do this to you. Know that I do not take joy. Like pulls out gloves. Know that I do not take joy in this. As she kind of grabs some dirt from the ground and rubs it into your feathers. Maybe mats it down a little bit with some water that she's got to kind of make sure, make it look like you've been working a little bit harder. And yeah, with the combination of that, all of a sudden Kazim kind of blends in with the rest of the kind of people. He looks like he kind of be actually belongs there a little bit. You mess up his shirt a little bit just to kind of make it look like he may have been carrying some boxes you see some i will pay for your washing fees whatever it takes and easily enough because you notice as you're walking through no one pays any mind to you as you kind of go into the alleyway and kind They're of perch up kind against of looking at me. you kind of perch up against the uh wall and mistress if you didn't know he was there you 100 percent sure that he would just kind of disappear into the background yay all right okay so before i go over there 
anything particular you want me to ask him? Or do you just want me to kind of rough it? We just need to see what he knows about this crystal and if he can help us in any way. Okay. All right. Um, wish me luck. Good luck. All right. She's going to, like, rough herself up to where it looks like, you know, she's been around the block a couple times and she needs to know what she needs to know. Okay. And she's going to nonchalantly, without drawing a lot of health, like a whole lot of attention to herself, walk up to him and be like, hey, I have a question for you. You see this kind of younger dwarf. You, you'd you say he probably, in terms of like human years, looks like he's maybe mid 20s or something like that. Look, looks pretty, pretty young, a little bit shorter of a beard as he kind of turns around and looks at you and goes, oh, a, t a tabaxi. I, wow, I, I, I've only seen you, you're typing books. Hi. Uh, Hi. Okay. What, what, can I help you? Well, she's going to try to turn on her charm, like be the little, I am looking for something more aptly. It was mine. It's not mine. I kind of want it back. And I was hoping that maybe someone who knows this place a little better and you look like, you know, a lot. Um, would you be willing to help me? I'll let you roll for persuasion. Okay. And would you say you're kind of going in an odd flirtatious kind of way? Because that's what it almost uh, seems. Kind of. I'll, kind give of you, like the... I'll give you advantage for it because you see him kind of intrigued by this random tabaxi. So you're, you're welcome to have advantage if you'd like. We'll take that advantage. And the advantage is two. What? What is the advantage exactly? Reroll? What do you yeah, what do you it, want? advantage okay. is always a reroll. Yeah, we're going to we're going to take that because wasn't bad, but it wasn't particularly good. Dirty 20. OK, so you kind of see you see him almost like kind of <laughs> sucking his gut a little bit. as you say that he kind of <laughs> leans against the door and what she's in front of him goes, ah, I see. Well, you've come to the right place. I think I might know uh, a person or two that might be able to help you. What 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 kind of thing were we missing? Maybe I maybe I've seen it. I have I have something similar to it that they've tried to replace it with. Okay. Ah, uh, they'll they'll switch. I, I see. Yeah. 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 One of those. Let me see. But Let, you know. Let's see what they a, gave you. Let's a see. conveyor can always tell the difference in what they prize and what they don't. Naturally, naturally, they probably thought they were slick. Let Let me see. Let me see how bad it is. She's gonna be like, well, can can we go over here? Like a point a little closer to the alleyway, but not like too close where they're. Yep. yep. You kind of see him. You kind of see him like look at the dude he was talking to. He goes, "I'll talk to you later." Go on. And he kind of <laughs> goes on over a little bit closer to the wall. He kind of leans up against the wall and goes, "Let's see it. Let's see what you got." No, no, don't worry about any of these people. They don't. They don't give a shit. Okay. She's gonna like kind of rub gently against his shoulder just to kind of keep the whole facade going. Yeah, you, you see him like, kind of you see him kind of like uh, a little bit. He's <laughs> and creepy. Like open, open her bag just a little bit and then point at the like gently touch and point at the sphere and be like, this isn't what it's supposed to be. You see him kind of peek over and goes, oh, what is that Rosemary Quartz sphere? Yeah, yes. Like, yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen a dime a dozen that look just like that. I mean, how can you oh, really this one, this one's very, very, very special. I mean, I can tell with it being so smooth and stuff. I mean, I normally get jagged ones, but when it comes to the sphere ones, I mean, they kind of all look the same, don't they? This one would stand out. Trust me. If that's the case. Yeah, I... And if they know what they had, they wouldn't want to touch it. I'll put it to you that way. It's that precious. Well, if that's the case, I, I I can't say I've really seen really anything like that. To be honest, uh, I'd love I'd love to help, but I see so many rosemary, and if it stands out that much, I feel like it'd pop into my mind. But yeah, everyone kind of just what they you gotta keep in mind what people can bring to me. It looks a lot like uh, they just came out of the mine. They maybe swiped it while they were on work and maybe brought it over to me, but. 
I've never seen anything. I've never seen it kind of that sphere. It is crazy. It looks like there's not even like a chisel mark on that. How the hell would they do that? That's insane to me. If it helps with anything, it they're made with magic. Ah, yeah. Most magic items I get or I see are generally like uh, magical items like, you know, weapons and clothes and stuff like that. I, I generally don't yeah. see stones all that often. I it doesn't it's not ringing any bells for me unfortunately um i mean i can i can get my uh get some feelers out to maybe some people that might have seen that but generally if if you know if it got stolen here or maybe yes. around oh so yeah i'm generally the uh and you kind of see him kind of puff out his chest a little bit almost bragging He's like i'm i'm generally the person that like, people will come to see for this thing there's not really many other people to talk to and if i haven't seen it or heard about it Chances are they probably haven't sold it. Would you do me the honest favor? And she kind of like bats her eyes and be like, could you tell me a couple of your top sellers? Kind of hinting at the people that would steal things and bring them to him so that maybe I can ask them if they've seen it. Roll for persuasion with advantage. Oh, God. I don't need the advantage. I got an 18 plus 7. Well... Apparently, guys, I'm good at this. You see him kind of look around and goes, uh, Well, when it comes to things that come from the mine, you might want to talk to Jadal. He kind of brings me some things. Um, when it comes to things that I might have been pilfered off some travelers, no no offense, but you kind of stand out as not from around here. Do. We don't, see, we don't get She's going to kind of like brush her, like brush her hair a little <laughs> bit and be like, Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. When it comes to like travelers and stuff, you might want to talk to Arendelle. He's he's you'll you'll find him over by the uh, over by the bar, kind of by the general store. He he kind of he hangs out there quite a bit. He's a he's a half elf, kind of sticks out a little bit. But you, he says he's half elf. Pretty sure he's human. He he just likes to tell everyone he's half elf. You he he likes to think of himself as kind of the roguish type. He 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 kind of. I think he's kind of a con man, but... Would you kind of... say he's slick enough to take it off of my person without me noticing? I haven't seen him work. He's brought me some pretty cool things, but I've always assumed he's just kind of gambled it off of people because he, he, he gambles Fair. a lot. But uh, when it comes... He's kind of the only person I've known to bring me kind of stolen goods from, like, people or travelers okay. and stuff. So you might want to go talk to him. Okay. But right. if it was him... He generally would have brought me something. Because when did you, do you know, have any idea when it might have gone missing? This, right around noon today. Yeah, he probably wouldn't have brought me that quickly. He's probably waiting for the heat to guide down. So if he does have it, he, if, if he did take it, he probably still has it. Um, If he does bring it to me, is there some place I can, like, contact you, let you know? Well, actually, I'm staying at the Feathered Bed, which is the place where it was taken from. Ooh, ritzy, ritzy. Okay, well, uh... I'll tell you what. Uh, what what's your name? Trix. Trix. I'm I'm Julian. It's a pleasure. Pleasure's mine. You, you grab his hand. You do feel this kind of for sorry. He gives this kind of creepy, <laughs> yeah, kind of feeling to him. He goes, "If I find anything, Trix, you'll be the first one to know." We thank you. And might I say, you look rather dashing. You seem kind of blush, and he goes, "Well, I, I mean, thank you." Well, I'll let you get back to the honest man's living. Of course, of course. Trix, you have a beautiful evening. Almost as beautiful as you. Oh, well, thank you. She's just going to kind of flick her tail and back <laughs> pay off. Yeah, you see, you kind of like halfway peek over and you see him staring at you as you walk <laughs> away. He is yes. infatuated with you. Uh, Kazim, you picked up all of that. Nico has competition. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, as you guys are kind of, I'm assuming you guys are kind of wandering off after getting that information. I'm probably gonna I mean, like Nichols. circle around. Okay. Yeah. So you, you kind of go to around it. to huh. talk to Kazim. So yeah. while well, you guys are kind of relaying that information to each other, uh, Nico and Silas, as you guys are kind of leaving your mm. friends to kind of do their own things, you guys are heading to the mine, correct? Yep. Yeah. So as, as, Nico as just you guys, follows after Silas. So you kind of walk a little bit back towards the way Kazim was kind of going down the main road. And as you're walking down towards the mine, you see uh, 
And er an the Eric Cockra that you talked to before, but he's not wearing his scrape garbs or his uh, light garbs anymore. He's uh, in more normal clothes. And you see that there's two other, like, humans that are with him that seemed pretty heavily armed uh, along with him as he's uh, standing there kind of waiting for something. And you assume that... You Based on the face and his feather pattern, you can tell that that's Terran waiting for you guys. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm just kind of sort of as we're walking up, good and her. Let's keep our guard up. You're not gonna kill you, right? Like you didn't say something really fucking offensive to him or something like that, right? I didn't say anything to him that I wouldn't say to anyone else. Ah. <sighs> Cool, cool, yeah, cool, cool, totally, yeah, let's go, yeah. All right, so as you guys are walking up, he kind of notices you guys and goes, oh, there there they are, and he kind of looks over at the other people and goes, hello, uh, the, these are our escorts for the night. They're, they're just in case, because we're going to have to go kind of deep in the mine to show you what I need to talk, show you guys. He seemed kind know. of, you, you guys both noticed that he's kind of looking around you, the whole time seeing if anyone's kind of noticing him. Yeah. And he goes, please, please let, let come this way. And he kind of leads you down to uh, down into the mine as you guys. Are you guys just going to follow him? Yeah, cautiously, but yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as you guys kind of follow him, you notice that the two kind of more heavily armed people kind of follow on each side of you guys, but kind of behind you almost to you guys formed this odd triangle. You're kind. You two were kind of in the middle while uh, Terran is ahead of you guys. And as you're walking down these mine tracks, you're seeing all the beautiful stones. There's not really many workers here, and you see Terran kind of walk up to the one kind of guard that's maybe looking around, and he kind of whispers something to him, and you ha see him hand something as he kind of walks off, and he just gives you guys kind of a nod as you walk on by. And you're going further and further down back towards the way that you guys kind of noticed but not all the way to to the gate and you do see that there's this kind of deep hole that is off to one of the sides because he takes a turn off the main minecart into this kind of dark tunnel as you guys are going you still see these beautiful kind of pinks and purples and blues and oranges and greens of all kinds of different gems all over the place and you see this hole that's in front of you with a kind of pulley system with a rock with a, a a kind of wooden wooden platform with ropes kind of coming down and you see him kind of walk over and he looks at one of the guards and goes can you lower us and he beckons you to kind of please on the platform step on first it's like a silas this oh. so that silas steps on and you see that uh you see Taryn also step on Nico. You coming along? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nico and then the last guard kind of all stand on, and the other guard kind of pulls this lever to kind of start lowering you guys slowly. And is it? it, it, it he kind of looks over and goes, "It, it will. It's, it's, it's gonna take a while for us to get all the way down there." What's all the secrecy? Well, this is part of Paylor's lore that aren't really shown and he kind of looks over at Nico and goes and I trust that you as well as the as a messenger of the gods will keep it amongst yourselves these are by the way uh this is Escanor this is my trusted bodyguard he I will trust him with my very life Escanor this is Silas and this is Nico and you see him kind of standing there and he goes hmm he doesn't really say anything to you guys but he's a larger human a, a, a bit more muscular than you're used to as he's Got, you see on his back that he's got a very large great axe on, uh, kind of slung to his back and gives you both a nod. And you didn't mm -hmm. want Kazim here because... We've got some time. I, I might as well explain. Um, Kazim is part of a group that we call the Children of Aelor. He is a Part of children that are kind of grown in the church and what we might what i'm about to show you i fear with how he's been acting and how his ideals seem to have been flowing lately might 
shake his faith and in a part in the point in which he's at now i fear we may need he, he it's best him to avoid it and i must ask quite bluntly the other anchor that you all saw in river's run that had the crack and the blood of it correct as far as i was told yes. i never saw it myself but kazim has no reason to lie to me at this point was Kazim cut at any point when you saw it? Not my knowledge. So you, you're you sure that his blood could not have been spilt anywhere near it? It was already bloodied when it was shown to us by the Archmage. Did you see it before it had blood on it? It, karma, it is the one that I touched before. It sure is, and it did not have blood on it before you guys saw I, it again. I can tell you there was no blood when we first saw it. When you first saw it, compared to after it was after you saw it a second time, because I assume you I assume you guys didn't keep it on you, otherwise you would know where the blood came from, correct? No, so there was an altercation with some doppelgangers, and it was stowed away. Okay. It's thought to be safe. Okay. We were proven wrong, and it was recovered, damaged, and then planted on Kaz in Kazim's room. Kazim did not put it there. He was with us the entire time. Everybody in the group was with us the entire between, time we were out of town. Between any point of you finding it, the first time and finding it the second time was Kazim struck and blood come out at any point he was struck okay whether his blood came into contact with it I don't know the reason it was cracked was because the blood was coming in contact and the only reason it would have been cracked is because the blood of Pelor was spilt upon it. And as far as I'm aware, Kazim was the only person of Pelor in River's Run at that point. Unless you guys are aware of anyone else, perhaps. No, everyone else we were in contact with was either a member of the Flow or a member of the Council. Okay. Follow me. And as he says that, you feel the kind of instant sh to stop of the uh, elevator. And as you kind of look around, you see that it's all pink crystal all over the place. Rosemary quartz kind of jutting out of every wall. It's almost entirely pink crystals. And as you begin to kind of walk down, you do see this kind of blue tinge down another tunnel that looks very man-made. And it goes into a long hallway. And as you look, you see on either side this kind of perfectly arched corridor with these symbols and uh, depictions on each side of you and a couple statues all over the place. And as you're kind of walking down into this corridor, uh, you guys notice, you, you hear Terran kind of describing, goes, these are the stories of Paylor that describe his battle with Theris Dune and how he was able to lock him away. This is a story that has become folklore, but we, as the hands of Paylor and as the voice of Paylor, know to be true, as we, for lack of a better term, have first-hand accounts of what might have happened. And as you guys are looking at it, you're seeing what seems to be pictures of like a, a large battle that might have commenced at some point, but you're also seeing the that same kind of writing that you noticed in the prior dungeon where you found the first sphere kind of all over the walls, written everywhere, but he doesn't seem to mention that for some reason. And you see what seems to be these depictions of Paylor glowing about, uh, you see him kind of doing something to what looks to be this great evil or darkness. Because one half seems to be completely uh, 
blanked out as if there was nothing there, like it was a shroud or something. It seems maybe it was that it doesn't have a depiction or form or something. You see these battles and you see the second one after that. It looks as though Paylor is taking some form of energy from the space around him as he's forming something in his hands. And the next one after that, you see that there is these this perfect circle of what looks to be these 12 circles around an, in a circle where you see this weird just mass in the middle of the circle. It seems gaseous and maybe it could be a picture about dark and he goes these here are the depiction of paylor creating and then sealing away thera's dune with the 12 anchors as you can see with an, and as you guys are seeing you he doesn't mention it but you two notice that one of the circles has this big x gouged out into it but he doesn't mention it and you see him go, these 12 anchors are what protect us from pay, uh, pe protect us from Thera's doom. They were lock him away. He is chaos itself. And if he if these 12 anchors are released, I fear nothing but chaos is to come after. And you kind of look at the next one and you see this just kind of you see fire and you see destruction among cities and stuff like that almost as a premonition to what might happen if Paylor if Thera's Dune was to come back and you see it's weird to see it because you two both looking at it no matter how much destruction and what seems to be depictions of corpses and it's beautifully carved by the way no matter how much of that destruction you see right in the middle it, it seems to be very far away down this road you just see a lone figure standing at the end of it just seems to be this black silhouette that silhouette in the depiction mm -hmm. who is that that is what keeps you kind of seem kind of struggle for a minute to find the words for it and goes that's the person that releases Thera's Dune, from what we can tell based on these. And with his blood being used to release the anchor, I fear that may be Kazim. You think this is a prophecy? As you can see from the other pictures, the only one that's un not fulfilled yet is this one. And with no depictions and no writing for us to read from, it, it our best guess is that may be the person that releases Thera's Dune himself. And as he says that, that there's no words, for some reason you guys look around and there's writing everywhere, all over this tunnel. Just... Just and look at Silas. <laughs> do you guys, either one of you, speak Abyssal? I don't think I do, no. Yeah, you have oh, no I'm idea. You have no idea. There's what... a reason. You have no idea what any of it says, but... Oh, no. Do either of you... Strikes, I'm gonna need uh, some lessons. So, uh... What's it called? Nico, you speak Celestial, correct? I do. So, there are bits and pieces that you're able to pick up. Uh, of other pieces kind of towards it that kind of describe what maybe what's be going on. You see these little like kind of captions and you see that like uh, Pay Paylor protects us. But for some reason, the part that you were able to read as Paylor has a slash through it and something written above it for some reason. And you mm. see uh, another one that says like Paylor blocks out the darkness. But again, Paylor has something slashed through it. And you see this where it says darkness has something slashed through it. And it's the one that has the three kind of circles. Um, what is this writing? Are you asking that to Taryn? I'm, say, I'm just sort of saying it out loud. Yeah, I would hear, like to like walk up to it. Like you kind of hear Taryn go Taryn and the bodyguard kind of go writing. What writing? I'm gonna point out to the, you know, Paylor will block out the darkness. 
This is me thinking it's a player. Sorry, mm. I'm thinking out loud. But uh, yeah, I will kind of look to. Yeah, I'll, I'll read it out loud. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, th those those are small depictions of what may be going on, but is it? Allow me. And he kind of shows and he goes, Paylor protects us. And you see in this picture that Paylor is fighting against, against the darkness and the doppelgangers and the unorthodox races. But as he says that neither one of you see any depictions of goblins or anything. You just see small figures. So you don't know where he got that idea from. And Paylor blocks out the darkness. You can see the darkness in the middle with his 12 anchors uh, created by him to protect us from Thera's dune. We are seeing different things. One of the circles is crossed. And you kind of see this kind of... And you see him look up at it. Which one? And when I he asks that... I, you I point, point to it. <laughs> you see him go... You see him almost shudder as he slowly starts turning towards the other end of the tunnel where you guys haven't gone yet. And you see... When you guys look over there, all you see is just a blue light at the end of it. Yeah. I think we may need to go. Tell us what you feel. If I can't see that, then I don't believe anyone of Paylor may be able to. And I fear there may be something down there. And you down see the, there in the glowing tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> you see him kind of, you see the bodyguard kind of perk up and kind of grab his great axe out from behind him. We take him. Oh, I just look at Silas. <laughs> mm. Do we help? The only way we can learn something, if we're seeing something they don't. Perhaps the writing in the cave is also something we can see that they can't. Maybe there are things out there that only we can see. All right, no, yet. Yeah. Uh, and here I hope we wouldn't die tonight. Okay, let's go. We're not going to cool. die, but I, I wonder if Kazim can see this. I mean, didn't he see the the marks back in the cave? Because if he can see them, he is not a child of Paylor, and if only the blood of a child of Paylor can release the anchor. Mm. Him seeing the writing would clear his name. We can discuss this later. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, I feel like we need to go back there, honestly. Like, look at the cl cave closer. After all of this has been fixed. But let, you you're right, let, let's go, we need to go. Do you want to go into the light? You know, when people tell you, like, you know, don't go into the light, that's not what I imagine, <laughs> honestly. Nico. I need you to be honest with me here. Yes. Theron will go. We'll see if there is something you can't. Mm. Tell us what we should expect down there. He, uh... Looks down and goes, that is where an anchor should be. And when you look down there, there should be the <coughs> statues of the Orthodox race staring towards this anchor. And I thought that it was, I think it's supposed to be, it should be protected by Paylor. Even though you, uh, and he kind of looks over at you, uh, Silas, and goes, Though you are of unorthodox, I believe that Paylor's light should allow you through as you've shown yourself to be of the gods yourself. But that should hold one of our acres. 
whatever you do, don't touch it. I know. And he kind of looks over and goes, go with them. And Escanor pulls out and goes, of course. All right. I'll start walking. All right. What's marching order? You know what? Nico will go first. All right. If he's gonna die, if he's gonna die, he's gonna die with pride. Be my fucking <laughs> guest. All right. <laughs> I'm not wanna, taking that responsibility. Say, I want to say I wish you guys luck, and uh, <laughs> next time, don't forget your loyal companion, the cat. Look, that is all. Look, look I, I, at this point, I feel like we all need to take some language classes. Yeah, like a Duolingo, please. I, yeah. No, the cat doesn't speak Abyssal, guys. Yeah, we. No, that's anyway. what I'm saying. We need to learn how to speak Abyssal if this is going to be a recurring thing. Wow, we're only really going to have so many spell slots. <laughs> we may not have time for rituals. While this is happening, Kazim and Mistrix, what are you guys up to? Oh. Um. Well, you heard everything that. He told me. I sure did. <laughs> I think we should go talk to the guy that he mentioned. Uh, the half elf, or your friend Dredal? Not Dredal. Um, uh... the half elf. The half elf is the only one that really makes sense to me, because he stays in the area where the taverns are. I don't know. I feel like if you talk to the half elf, though, he might immediately get spooked upon recognizing you. Okay. That is, if he actually stole it. How about you go up to him and try to convince him to steal from me? Why? Think about it. If he's already stolen it from me, he won't ask for a lot of money because he knows it's the false item. Right? So the plan is, we suspect this guy of having stolen from you. So I give him money to steal from you again? So my plan is that you try to convince him to steal from me and try to like flesh out if he seems like he's already taken it and is giving you low balls because he knows that you're not going to get what you want. But you could also not say that it's me and tell them that someone has the object that you're looking for and you're willing to pay a pretty penny if he can get it to you. And if he has it, He'll want to know how much you're wanting to pay, and he'll probably, if you give him a high enough number, be like, oh yeah, here it is. You kind of get what I'm trying to say here? Not really. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm speaking gibberish to you because it's my cat brain. I, I'm still not sure what telling him to steal from you will accomplish. Okay. Because he could Skip always... If okay. you're telling him you want the object and you're going to pay a pretty penny for it, if he can find it for you. Okay. If he has already taken it, he will know where it is and he will be extremely willing to get money for it. Right? I guess. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, okay. Or he'll tell you possibly who he thinks has it or try to find it. Use him right. for what he's good at, is what I'm saying. Let's give it a whirl. And I'll go play a song and look unsuspicious and... Yeah. First, so, we'll, first I'll help you find him, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so you guys start making your way back towards the, uh, the... The Leaky Tap is what they called it, what he called it. The bar that, as Kazim, you would know, that's the bar across the street from the, uh... The general store and as you open up there there is quite a few people in there you'd say it's about 
15 ish. It's not nearly as nice as the uh, feathered bed. You look around and there's a lot more wooden, there's a wooden tables kind of strewn about, much more cheaply made chairs as well. Not as beautiful as other places you've been. There's a bar that seems kind of rough construction, but it is serviceable for what it's used for. You see that in the corner is that there's these, uh, there's, there's two gnomish and one dwarven person, all kind of their own instruments as they're trying to play music as Mistrix is kind of getting a little irritated by every oh, it's, it's, terrible it's, note. it's so out of tune that it, it, it is kind of irritating you a little bit uh but as you guys walk in could you both either roll a perception or investigation for me can i say that we go in kind of staggered so that we don't look like we're together sure that means that you, both of you neither one of you gets advantage but sure but it'll also look better if the plan yes. goes yes does that work for you yeah kazim kazim I got a 13. Okay. Okay, apparently it works for him. All right. I got an 11. So. <laughs> nah. it, it, the music it, is too bad for me. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard for you guys to really see who might be it. Perhaps they are better at kind of going into the crowd, especially since there's a lot of human and dwarvish kind of mixed in there. Then, yeah. He's supposed to be half elf, but like the dude said, you're not really seeing any one of that kind of description anywhere around here. He may look more human as he is, right? Yeah. Now. Okay. So it might be a little hard for you guys to really pick him out out of this crowd. Um, yeah, you don't you don't really see anyone that sticks out to match the description uh, immediately. Just there's maybe there's too much too many people. It's a little loud, and the music isn't all that great. Going about my own thing to try to, you know, stand out and not associate with the bird. That was me saying that, not the cat. <laughs> Fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, she is going to... You know what? Fuck it. She's going to jump up on the table in front of them, point at the musicians, and say a challenge to show you how truly terrible and out of taste your music style is. <laughs> Roll for persuasion with advantage. Okay. Uh, that is a 19 plus 7. You hear that, Glorin? I hear that, Brolin. How about you, Darren? Oh, I do hear it. How dare she? How dare How dare? How dare she? <laughs> Except as you hear all three of them say it at the same time. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do three rolls. Kazim, you're watching this all happen, by the way. <laughs> uh, She's going to like pull out her <laughs> tunic and pop her neck and then pull out the loot, but then have her tail kind of like pat on the drum. She's like, since you get three, I get one and a half. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so we're going to do uh, three best out of three performance checks and see who does the best. Let's rock, paper, scissors this shit. That's right. All right. We're going to start with the first one. So there. that is a 22. We draw. Good, sir. Oh, you got 22, too? We draw. Weirdly enough, you both start on this kind of folklore kind of song that sounds very reminiscent to other songs of which ones might have heard, like such as Devil Went Down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. And as you guys are kind of playing, it, you guys are in sync. It's perfect. You guys sound exactly the same. It's amazing. As you go for that, what's the second roll? How about 23? Uh, 24. Okay, so you, you guys are all starting <laughs> to try and pick up the pace and see if you can outpace each other. But you managed to kind of get together as they, all of a sudden you bust out this kind of solo with the drums and this perfect harmony that... It, it's very close, and Kazim, you're noticing this too. You're seeing everyone turn and watch this person, watch these guys as they're doing. If you want to roll perception for me, twenty-one. You see out in the corner closest to the windows. You actually see a person that might match the half -elf, half elf description, kind of with his hood up, kind of sitting, staring directly as Mistrix, kind of thinking to himself a little bit he doesn't look alarmed or anything but you 
he might be the person what you're looking for is what you might be thinking. And as Mistrix is kind of showing them up in the show, we're going to do one more. Oof! So, oh, God. How is 12? With this, <laughs> with this I'm going to go, I'm going to pull out all the stops, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, I want to use Bardic Inspiration on Kazim, since I am playing music. Okay. Um, That way he has a bonus d6 for whatever he does. Okay. Um, She is going to mid-play switch from the lute to the to the veal which is like the violin kind of thing fitting up the song interesting and because i have proficiencies in acrobatics i would like to do a flip off of the table for my last note as well can okay I do that? you can do uh, we're gonna do acrobatics first okay acrobatics first let me get to the page dun, dun, dun it. i feel like this is gonna go horrible but we're gonna try uh, 19 for acrobatics. So roll for performance okay. with advantage. Okay. That is 24. So you see, Kazim, as you're, not as you're staring at this, all of a sudden, Mistrix kind of flings the her one instrument around her back and pulls out this violin and starts shredding on it while she's keeping beat with her drum and does this kind of backflip off the table as she's finishing off. And you see the three kind of the two gnomes and the one dwarf kind of sit there with their instruments in hand, just stopped like. <laughs> did you did you did you see that? What? What just what? But that oh, she you see will do her bow. You see them all kind of put their instruments down and then you see them kind of all get on the ground like we uh kind of bowing to you as they have no idea what the fuck just happened they've never seen anything like that teach us teach us teach us loki welcome to the cat stealing the show <laughs> anyway. Kazim, what are you doing while all of this is happening and you you've managed to think of who you think your mark is i'm i'm gonna just you said he's leaning up against the wall in a corner? Yeah, you see him kind of close to the door, kind of leaning up against the wall. You see a little side table next to him with, like, a beer, and you see him kind of sipping on it every once in a while, staring at Mistrix. I'm going to grab a drink, and I'm just going to stand next to him. Okay. Uh, anything else you're going to do? I'm just going to... Strike up some small talk with him, get his attention. Okay. So you kind of see him leaning against the wall. Do you say anything specific to get his attention? Crazy show, am I right? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've never seen anything quite like that. So, um... Terran's the name. Uh, stick out my hand to shake us. You see him kind of look at you, kind of shift your eyes, and goes, Noel, nice to meet you. Roll for insight. Here often, uh, insight? Yeah. I'm going to be using that bardic inspiration now. Okay. You're welcome. That's one plus the three that I got on the d20 plus my insight. Yeah, so, 11? Okay, yeah. What were you going to say? You come here often, Niall? Well, I mean, I spend, I spend a good amount down here. Not too much in the Dwarven District. Yourself? Don't see many or Eric Crocker down here. Yeah, I'm kind of just a wanderer. I make, a, I make my money where I can, you know? Hey, sometimes we all got to make the money the hard way. Yeah, uh, sometimes hand over fist if you catch my man. Huh. Don't think I quite understand what you mean, that friend. Can I buy you a drink? Yeah. Uh, nice ale would be fine. All right. You see him kind of lift up his hand and put up two fingers to the bartender, and you see the bartender kind of nod as he starts working on. He goes, "What brings you down today?" I, uh, 
I'm looking for something. You see him kind of look over you, take a sip of his drink, and... Looking for something? What you looking for? It's, uh... It's gonna sound like a strange ask, I know, but... I hear if there's anybody who'd be able to find it, it might be you. Me? What makes you say that? Who told you? Just what I've heard. Roll for persuasion. It is a... Yeesh. I believe in you. That's a 15. Well, I might nail a thing or two. I'm looking for a gemstone. A large, spherical gemstone. Any kind or... Rose quartz. Okay. How perfect's the spear going to be? Flawless. Oh. Kind of hard to get that. Reckon magic the only way. Magic is the only way. Any, any... Might know where something like this might be, or am I going to find it myself? I heard one was in the Sky District earlier this morning. Oh. I happen to know what the person might be carrying it, looks like. Unfortunately, I think it might be the performer. What, that black cat? From what I understand, she was carrying one earlier today. But I saw somebody mess around with her stuff earlier. I couldn't get a look at their face. I was hoping you might be able to track down who may have switched them around. So you're saying you're saying she doesn't go she don't got it anymore? She's got something in her bag, but it's not the same that entered the city. Hmm. I might look I reckon I might be able to look into a thing or two, but uh There's a lot of coin on the line for this. How much we talking? Hundred plat. You see his eyes kind of go wide and go. Well, was that much? I. All right. I think I might be able to look into it. Now, any way you might get your hands on the the one that got swapped, so I know what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think I could probably grab it for you. You bring it to me, I'll, I'll, I'll go take an eye out, see what I can find. Now, I doubt the performer is going to take kindly to us grabbing her bag and whatever's inside of it. So I'll grab it, I'll let you take a look at it, and I'll throw it back there. Keep her under the radar. That's my speciality. Uh, I'm going to go walk up to Mistrick's bag and grab it. Okay. Mistrick, you going to do anything while he grabs it? Because he's not doing it sneaky. Hold on. Hold on. That's that's a that's a question for intelligence cat. Uh, no. She's okay. literally, she is too into talking to the menagerie of musical declined people. Okay, so easily enough, you just grab it. No one seems to really. Just so you know, guys, that was a net one. Drink. <laughs> I did not intend for that, but uh, yeah. Cheers. Fucking cheers. That was literally it. Was literally a decision of odds and evens, and it was like net one. So no, she's right. she's too good. So blood. You're able to bring it back to him very easily. And he kind of is leaning up there and goes, I gotta say, my friend, that is absolute, that is the worst burglary I've ever seen. It. How she didn't see that baffles me. She's fucking distracted, man. It doesn't, does, nobody cares. Let's see let's it. Be real word. Let, let, let's see it. I'll pull out the stone. You can kind of look at it and go, God, 
Damn, that's beautiful. Why don't you just take that one? This one's not the right one. See how see all the cracks on it? I'll show show them some specific cracks. And you you saying the other one that she got to go traded don't doesn't have those? Fucking flawless. You said for a hundred plat, right? Hundred plat. Right, meet me Early back here. Can... Meet me back here tomorrow morning. I think I, I I'll see if I can find something. I walk fast, friend. If you can get it here by tomorrow morning, there'll be a tip in it for you as well. I'll I'll I'll, I'll, tr I'll do my best. All right. All right. And I guess you're gonna go put it back. Yeah, I'll just throw the bag back where I got it. It's <laughs> just over the crowd. <laughs> Just, huh. no, I can no, find it. Oh roll for Dex. I, I was about to say, I demand a roll to see if you shatter the wall. Dex is my speciality, man. Uh, anything specific? An attack roll? Nope, or... just Dex. What if I aim for somebody specifically? Then can we make an attack roll? You're doing it with Dex. <laughs> As an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, Mistrix, does, does, like, does, 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 does it throw it? Does it just like throw it back over there? Not like throw it back over there. No, so I just imagine the fucking bag comes through and smacks one of the dwarves in front of me in the face. Yeah, as Mistrix is standing there, kind of chit chat with those with the gnomes and the dwarf. All of a sudden, there's just this bag that slaps one of the gnomes over onto the side. Huh, what the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Mr. I'm Shirin. looking out a window. I've completely turned around and I'm staring out a window. Roll for stealth! Another deck stat. Ooh. That's a nat 18 plus 3, 21. No one has any fucking idea that came from you. <laughs> I'm literally gonna like stop and look around and like. Oh, Mistrix, you hear this dude in the corner because <laughs> the dude that you've been talking to is fucking on the ground cupping his face, fucking dying of laughter. <laughs> and I'm just staring out a window, slowly sipping my ale. Can I can I roll to get the feeling that he did something because he's the only one that's not like? Oh, sure, you got to roll for perception. You got to right, be his go. stealth to be able to tell if it was him. What was your stealth, good sir? 21. 21. All right. I, I can't fucking tell to save my yeah, soul in hell. You know he took it. You have no idea. He, you assume. This, how did he? Th there's no way he threw that bad. No he fucking way. No. No. Yeah. Anyway. I feel like I, I guess I fell on the table. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm going to pick up the bag and I'm going to check the rock. Uh, you. <laughs> oh my god. You was, open it up. <laughs> The rock is shattered. I'm gonna oh, open no. sob. I'm gonna openly sob. I'm gonna no. openly just I fucking sob. It. it was a natural one. It Everybody is fucking, fucking drink. Shattered. Oh, I didn't mean actually throw it, but <laughs> this is why we pick our words carefully. Too late. Too late. Think before I'm you literally think gonna, I'm literally going to open speaking with my English. Song. The only way I could have been speaking more plain English is if I threw a couple of uh, gamer words in there. Oh, oh my shit. God. That was <laughs> fucking the hilarious. The cat is now openly fucking sobbing in the middle of this bar. His name's oh. not even paying attention. He's just staring out the window looking at... <laughs> looking at... His name. His name. isn't it? <laughs> we fucking needed that. <laughs> Uh, I needed that. If it was literally anything <laughs> other than a one, I would have let it be fine. Does but anybody it was a nat have one. an undo spell? Or are we rewind or something? Someone's, someone's, yeah, someone's mending. got to know mending, right? Someone <laughs> mend on It's not going to be as perfect anymore, though. <laughs> we'll always know. Someone, <laughs> someone mend it, please. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, we don't have the artifact. We don't have the fucking dupe. We don't have anything anymore. He is, he is seriously asking anyone in the bar if they have some sort of mend to help with. Please. No real. Like, no bitches can rob. <laughs> no. 
I'm not drinking again. I'm not doing it. <laughs> good, good. Fucking do it. Two nat ones in a row from you? <laughs> but oh, I'll do it. Shit. I'll do it. Is this karma for, is this karma for her two twenties this game? Oh fuck! I can't breathe. <laughs> oh god. I will god oh my god. I will reiterate, Kazim. We needed oh. that. <laughs> Fucking drink, you piece of shit. You did this. You did this, uh, you fucking drink. Mistrix. Mistrix, I will say. I don't, don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it, Karma. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> the bartender will let you know that, that perhaps tomorrow that there is a, a, a potential magic shop that might know mending. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, oh fuck! Can something be going so well? I immediately. Fucking <laughs> so. We doing, oh god! We were doing so well. Me and Nico were making progress. It was progress. going. Miss Drix has put on one hell can of a I, fucking show. Can I, can I do healing word on the rock, please? <laughs> Last oh resort. I want to heal. Oh, it's not a creature, so no. But oh I shit! I'd, li I'd I'll, like to cast I'll, wish. I'll let you try. It's <laughs> just sitting there trying to heal it. <laughs> well, if I roll a goddamn nat twenty, I want to heal. I'll tell you what. If you get a nat twenty, I will let you fucking fix it. Let's go, no. bitch. Oh. No, I got a nineteen though. It tried. Fucking you can see him, you kind of peek over it, you see Mistrix openly weeping with her hands glowing over her back. Oh god! Please, just mix! Man, beautiful night tonight. It's, uh... Goes back to looking out the window. The dragon. dragon. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Fluffy, no. no! Oh no! Alright! While this shit show is happening. <laughs> We return oh, back. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other two are realizing everything that Kazim knows is a fucking lie. <laughs> While we go back to our group within the cave, about oh. to enter into the light that is in front of them. I'm going to mute my mic so I can openly sob. <laughs> you guys begin to start walking towards the light. And Nico, you're going first, right? Yeah, it's all about me. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. First. As you guys are kind of walking into this kind of more open room, you guys see these kind of seven statues in front of you. Two of them are dwarves, two of them are gnomes, and three of them are human. Kind of standing there. Um, all looking into the middle here of this for lack of a better term, weird pedestal that's in front of you guys. Okay. And as you guys are looking at this uh, pedestal, you look over to your right and you see this person come out from the corner. An Aarakocra. Very familiar Aarakocra. Smiling. Looking at the two of you. <laughs> oh, I knew I'd see you again. Escanor, you're seeing this, right? You see Escanor kind of... You look over at Escanor, you see him kind of... Looking at this... Thing. Yeah. I see it. Uh, ready for round three? Oh. Welcome back, friend. Oh, friends. I've just come with simple questions. I'm looking for something that which belongs to me. Hopefully you know where it is. I'd hate to yeah. hope I'd hate to see this go bad. Yeah. <laughs> I do. The glaive's right here and it's ready for your fucking skull. <laughs> and Nico, you'll see Silas is fucking angry right now. Silas, 
Roll for constitution. I'm not raging, I'm just angry. Okay, okay. So, so like, this is the guy that took everything from me. I'm not yep. a happy chappy. You are, you, you, uh, see him kind of simply go, well, I feel like someone's got to ask it. Where's my rock? We'll tell you where yours is if you tell us where ours is. You don't have a rock. Where's the one that's mine? And he kind of points over to the empty pedestal that's in front of you. And as you guys kind of look closer at it, you see that there's this... Uh... It looks like it's kind of... Think of a ring kind of holding in a stone. It looks like one of those, but it's been bent out and it's empty on the inside. Where is it? If he doesn't have it, and we don't have it, then who the fuck has it? I whispered to Silas. That's what I'm worried about. Silas, make a const make a wisdom saving throw. You motherfucker. I think you have that you have that necklace, don't you? Yep, I Actually, do, and yep. I'm tempted to use it. Um can I can I use the charge after I see the result of the roll? I'll allow it. I mean, if I if I have to use it before, yeah. I'll use it. I'll allow it. All right. That's a nat twenty. I'm taking a picture. Cause... Fuck. All right. Fuck him up, Zephy. Fuck him up. <laughs> it's a good thing we have only got like 15 minutes left. Otherwise, this would get real fucking difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Look, again, you did this to your damn self. I sure did. I put these rules upon myself. So We were happy to go sober D&D, but you're like, now let's make it interesting. I want to be different and cool and quirky. I mean, tell me you're not having fucking fun. I'm fucking <laughs> terrified. <laughs> Good. As you are kind of, you, you look over at Nico and go, I have no fucking idea. You, you both notice his eyes flash, that very familiar kind of purple flash. And, uh, Silas, you feel this kind of feeling creeping in your mind, but you're very easily able to kind of push it back, almost like you're getting accustomed to it at this point. Oh. Someone doesn't want to let me in? Do you know something, Silas? I know a lot of things. I know that Therizdun is trying to escape. I know that, know it or not, you're playing a, playing a part in this plan. I know what you're capable of. And I know that one of these days you're going to walk into a room with me and you're not walking out. Again, you hear this. <laughs> Threats? Tribalists? You think you're in the position to make threats no i promise you when i'm done with you you'll have nothing but a head nothing but eyes and ears i will drag you through the streets and you'll get to listen to all the little boys and girls laughing at how pathetically weak you are i will make sure that you feel every second of pain you put rogan through it was a 22 hit. Yep. Please take 15 points of slashing damage. I can eat that for fucking breakfast, mate. As you are saying Rogan's name, all of a sudden, Nico, you notice this too, that one of his arms kind of bend up a little bit and shoot out in this straight razor sharp blade cutting right across uh silas's kind of in but right here underneath his armpit in between his arm and his chest and a deep gash kind of opens up and splurts out nico how far away is he <laughs> uh, i can show you fucking lovely <laughs> oh that doesn't build well just just so just so i have yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it should have brought you guys over. Oh, I need to get you guys. Let me 
set this up so that, that is guessing that's you control him. that and then you can control that that's you guys uh and nico if you can make a wisdom saving throw for me let's see wisdom wisdom please okay okay that's pretty good uh let's see uh 20 door to 20. so you guys uh, after you see this kind of blade kind of shoot out towards him towards uh silas you kind of see him quickly turn his head towards nico and start giggling again <laughs> And his eyes flash again. And Nico, you start feeling that kind of weird feeling, almost like his fingers are digging through your brain, almost searching for something. And you're able to push it back. He's not able to fight. And he goes, both of you have something to hide. <laughs> Interesting. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We lost not Josh. This time. <laughs> not again. And if we could all please... Roll for initiative. <laughs> Not it. I don't have to. Good luck. Uh, your camera's better be fucked up again. Uh, there he goes. Uh, okay. 21. 17. All right. So let's start with Nico. What would you like to do? <laughs> yeah. It, just a reminder, we didn't heal from the last fight we had, so it's going kind of puff. Uh, I'm going to cast False Life on myself. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so as soon uh, as you kind of feel a, that weird feeling kind of creeping through you, you kind of see this blue mist kind of seeping out of that necklace on you and encoding your entire body. Silas, you start seeing that the flesh on Nico's like skin starts to kind of weirdly swell a little bit but then rot almost as if like this weird extra couple layers of skin but it seems to be rotting immediately for some reason and um, yeah you're able to cast that anything else you want to do now nico let's see the dude is right there right yeah this, um, this this is the person right here it's gonna be best if we kind of split the attention so i'm gonna i'm gonna walk Let's see, I'll walk 30 feet in that direction. Let's see. Um, yeah, 30 feet there. And uh, let's see, how many bonus actions? Uh, ooh. Let's see. Uh, okay, it has to be close by. Okay, cool. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That's it. Okay. Uh, for my turn. Silas, what would you like to do? I'd like to use my action to okay. give the Necklace of Wisdom to Eskinor. Okay. Uh, and sort of say, use this to protect yourself. Okay. Easily enough. Uh, as your action, you're able to see him kind of grab that really quick. Um, so I'll give that to him. Uh, I'd like to use my bonus action to rage. Okay, roll for constitution. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's a 10. Meets it, beats it, fortunately enough. You are, um... Oh, thank fuck. You oh, are... No. You, you start feeling that... Ra as soon as you see this face, you feel... And you feel the weird creeping in your mind. You feel this rage building up inside you. And you... Uh, Nico, you see the fire start kind of scorching out of Silas's eyes. And you see him white-knuckling his glaive as you see this kind of weird almost smoke coming from it but silas you're able to kind of push it down just enough to be able to control it but just yep. barely yep. and then i'm gonna move to here i think i'm happy uh i'll move one up i'll move one closer i want to be within 20 there we go so uh, yeah and i'll end my turn there Okay, so what, after you after you see kind of Silas run over, you guys see this knight kind of immediately grab that necklace and quickly put it on as a bonus action, and he immediately starts running over to this person and tries to attack him. Oof! That's a nat 20. 
Yeah, that's fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eskador's the MB fucking pig. <laughs> Eskador's the main character. Eskador is just get tied bitches. <laughs> So you see him kind of grab out his this great axe as he brings it over his shoulder and kind of trying to bring it down as hard as he can. You see that uh, this Eric Hawker kind of backs off a little bit as fast as he can, but not not quite quick enough to be able to stop getting a gash all the way down his arm. And you see that black kind of ooze kind of seeping out a little bit. You also see this weird kind of sparks kind of coming off of this great axe. It does quite a bit of damage, but... Not as much as you might, uh, it seems to be a little bit less than, uh, you might have expected from quite a big axe, but it does do quite a bit of damage as he kind of comes back and you hear this, and he kind of goes in for a second attack. Oh, fuck! That's a nat one, y'all. No! That's a nat one. Uh, what a high and a low for that shit. Nat 20. So he kind of brings up but you see that it kind of throws him off a little bit that that he's only able to get a little cut and as he's trying to bring up another one he kind of lets go of his axe a little bit and he kind of goes back to go grab it but he's not able to go make that second attack just anymore um so now it's going to be the doppelganger's turn yeah okay <sighs> come on okay and you see that the doppelganger very uh, quickly, as soon as he kind of gets that gash, jumps back a little bit, and you see him move over to this section right here, just kind of over to his right side, and you see his hand kind of straighten out into this blade as he jabs it up really quickly into this kind of clavicle area around his neck. It doesn't seem to be, like, deathly dangerous, but it obviously seems to hurt quite a bit. You see blood splat out the back of it, and you see kind of Eskinor drop one arm as maybe he kind of wasn't expecting that much damage from it. Um, yeah, uh, what was that? That one. Yeah, you can tell that he he's bleeding profusely hard. Very, it is a lot of damage in which he took. Uh, next, yeah. we're going to go with Nico. Uh, let's see. I'll move additionally, like, 30-ish feet, kind of take, like, half cover, I suppose, like, behind mm -hmm. the statue. And, um, Nico will, uh... <laughs> because we both know how it goes being close to that bitch, uh, he would, he would have shot with an Eldritch Blast. Um, instead. Right, for the attack. Let's see, uh... Mm. Ooh, that is 19. Well, that hits. Uh, let's see, D10. Uh, that is 10 force damage and 2 fun thunder. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> Silas, as you're standing there, you see Nico kind of running off behind one of the statues, but <coughs> peek out long enough. To be able to throw off one of his uh, Eldritch Blasts, you see this blue kind of energy ball running, uh, rocketing towards this doppelganger. As it blasts across the side, you see him kind of turn, looking over at Nico. <laughs> and you see this kind of weird kind of electricity kind of waving off of him. It, it obviously did something, but again, not nearly as much as you might think. Uh, and next, we're going to oh, go no. to Silas. All right. Uh, Silas is going to have to get up all nice and close and dirty with him. Okay. So. Going to be up here on the opposite side. And from what Kazim told us, and I'm going to hope that his, his studies were true, radiant damage makes it hurt. Okay. So. I'm bringing out Tasha's like the copy of Tasha's axe. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Mm. So that's a plus six. Uh oh, that's not gonna. No, that's a twelve. I don't think that's gonna hit. That does not hit, unfortunately. Damn it. Uh, in which case, do I have anything I can do? Ah, uh, there's, there's nothing I can do. So I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna end my turn. Um. Mm. Potions, are they action or bonus action? Bonus You're... action. But you know what? I th I'm going to take the healing potion just okay. to be safe. 
All right, you can do the uh, roll yourself if you'd like. Cool, cool, cool. It's a one and a four. Plus. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. So I'll turn. Ah, what? Okay. And I'll end my turn there. So as this kind of doppelganger is looking over at Nico, you see Silas kind of behind it. But unfortunately, he tries to slash down with the hand axe, but it seems like there's kind of glance off of this weird fleshy kind of material that he's using his his body it seems much harder than it should be and it just seems to glance off with no real deal and he's sitting at uh, looking at nico <laughs> nico make a wisdom saving throw oh it's still oh nico uh 22 total so you again you feel you see that flash and you feel this kind of creeping feeling going towards the front of your brain but you're able to push it back just just right and he goes oh don't shut me out forever. <laughs> and it's going to be the knight's turn. He's going to try and attack with his great axe again. He's going to go for the swing, but the, the doppelganger is able to kind of jump out of the way just enough to be able to dodge that uh, attack. He's going to, but the, uh, the Eskinor is going to go for one more as he kind of brings it down from the ground and slash up with his great axe. He's able to actually connect with him. And you see this. Again, he gets a very good strike up against the side right here and clips off, it clips his ear and you see a little bit kind of fall off, but weirdly enough, you see kind of reconstitution against that ear. Uh, minus that. And you see the doppelganger doesn't pay any notice to it, but you do see that he's got another black ooze kind of coming down his side over here and it's going to be the doppelganger's turn. He is going to use, let me see real quick. Make sure I've got enough here. Right there. <laughs> I'll just have a thought. Oh, no. Uh, so you guys have... So Escanor is going to take his uh, attack of opportunity, but he missed. Silas, you do get an attack of opportunity. All right. Nice. Oh, that's a 24. So you do manage to hit Ooh. just before. You don't have Sentinel, do you? I uh, do not have any feats yet. Okay, so no. go ahead and roll for damage so you don't stop him from moving, but you were able to get a good hit on him. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to. Uh, where is this? You hit on each. It's not my turn, so I can't do that. Yeah, it's not an action. Um, yeah, no, I was looking at Divine Fury, but I'll use a charge. Okay. Which will give me a d6 of radiant damage on top of the flashing damage. It's, fuck you, I remember your weakness. <laughs> so that is uh five six seven eight nine slashing and one radiant okay so as you uh as he's trying to walk away nico you see that silas is able to kind of slash to the side and they will kind of dig it into his arm a little bit it kind of dangles down a little bit before you see it kind of come back together uh, but you do see that there's some sizzling and bubbling at the where his wound was. It does a little bit more damage than you might have actually expected it to do. Um, and Nico, if you can go ahead and make another wisdom saving throw for me. Uh, mm, that's a bit worse. Seventeen. <laughs> Okay, so you you feel, again, you feel that weird creeping feeling in front of your brain kind of coming towards you. But again, you're able to push it back just barely. But as you kind of able to push that back, oh. does a 17 hit you? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, that was... Please take 14 slashing damage. Okay, okay. You still up? Okay, so you guys are <laughs> Silas, you and Eskimo are kind of watching as uh, Nico's hiding behind that statue and tries to dive off to the side but unfortunately doesn't make it in just enough time and gets kind of caught in, her, in his shoulder as he's kind of brought back to the side but he's able to rip it out to be able to duck behind the uh, statue just in time he takes a, quite a bit of damage but he still seems to be doing okay as we go into Nico, it's your turn <laughs> he seems to be doing okay. I can, I can tell you that it's not how it looks. Uh, I'm gonna have like a bonus action drink that portion of healing. Okay, go ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> 2d4. I'm gonna just roll it on fucking D&D Beyond. 
uh, much easier. Um, that's seven points of healing. <laughs> uh, yeah, cool, cool. Um, I will. Man, fuck, oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, you know what? Yeah. Nico will. Okay, cool. Fuck you, bitch, and fuck this, and I will turn invisible. <laughs> Okay, so you turned invisible. <laughs> yeah, I got some visibility on myself. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, for my movement, I'll fuck off somewhere else. I'll fuck off behind the other statue. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I'm so low on health, come fuck me. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> right. that is my turn. <laughs> All right. And Silas, you see that Nico, as he kind of hides behind one of the statues and immediately starts kind of evaporate into the darkness that is his background. Yeah. And kind of vanish from sight. You see the doppelganger kind, of kind of looking around and turn around towards you. And please roll a, roll a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Like, cool. Um, I should know my numbers by now. Uh, that's a 15. So you feel this feeling of it poking around in your brain. And you hear the doppelganger go, Oh, you don't know where my rock is. That's fine. And you see it kind of, again, turning into a very feminine orc that you recognize a lot. And you see your wife standing in front of you, smiling, cocking her head, and goes, let's find it together, shall we? <laughs> and that's where we're going to end it for this week. Oh, oh my god. Oh. It's okay. I'll go. never end on the happier note? Well, no, it's, it's not good. my fault that I've this is where plan. I ended up at the four hour mark, okay? I've got a plan. <laughs> I've got a plan. I just need to know, Nico. Yeah. Dragon. Yes. You got any rope? <laughs> uh, yes, I do. That's clever. I think Josh died on us. I think you... There he is. There he is. <laughs> so, the, al the, al the alcohol setting in. <laughs> so real quick, before we go, uh, I wanted to show off one more song, in the, which we, I'm actually going to oh, play shit. it for when we're when we're leaving, uh, mm. when we're finally going to go. Uh, I wanted to send this off to someone else. They're playing something a little bit different, but episode six, a hell of a lot of fun. Thank you guys for coming to play with me. Thank you viewers for coming to watch us so much. That was an absolute fucking blast. Do you guys have anything for our amazing viewers before we get? We We're gonna you. fucking die. Yeah, they, we they... love you. Oh, we we die. die. Hopefully we, we'll we see what happens during episode 7. I love you guys very much. I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye! Bye-bye!